Oh, it's finna get real funky today. Get the TV in the house. What up? Tone, what's up, baby? How you doing, Ticket? What's going on, man? Tone, you, you look at what? quite dapper, sir. Living, look living, dapper. To be loca, living to be that loca in the house? Yeah, man. Got DJ Vlad in here today. What's up, baby? We're going to get to it today, okay? This is going to be a way better day than what I thought. Let's go. We got some uh, sensibility in here today, Shield Town. Now you can't get away with your cap. You see what I'm saying? Because the better side of you is in here today. Let's go uh, now. Mars Hill, baby. <laughs> Fellas, right from the top, uh, the NBA just unveiled its NBA Rising Stars teams. Were you guys able to see these? Well, it's rookies versus sophomores. I want to I want to put this on the screen, and I want to ask you guys, which team do you favor? Which team do you think is better than the other? Let me go ahead and throw this up right now. Uh, in the meantime, as you guys can see, we have a legend back on the panel. The, the return of a legend. Um, Fluent, is it anything that needs to be clarified or specified or stated right now? No, 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 no. I'm good. I'm 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 happy to be back for a little guest appearance, and I'm sure uh we'll get into some stuff. I got a lot on my oh, mind. Let's, let's stay on topic. Tone, let's stay on topic. Come on, let's stay on topic. I need tone. I need you, bro, because I'll be getting jumped on here, bro. <laughs> The topics do not be sensible when they be coming at me. And you're the only logic of reason because sometimes Mars be acting like he just – he don't want to be my partner over here sometimes when he just mm. want to gang up on me. You know what I'm saying? So I need somebody like you that got a lot of sense, especially when your brother Chilltown is in here doing all this cap. Capping. Especially what we've seen from the Lakers recently. It's funny how Ron wants to start with this other game, but we'll get to that. So you having trouble with Troll Mars and, and Clutch Town. I hear you. I hear you. I haven't even been trolling. That's the problem. I will I, I will say this though, Tone. His name is not Anobi. It's Ananobi. I'm kidding. Ananobi. You're it's welcome. Not, it's, it's not Anobi. It's Ananobi. Get it right. That's not his name. I figured I'd spell it phonetically for you. Please. Uh, and 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 I'm <laughs> glad to see Bob is in the building because I I do have one thing to say. Um, y'all that do the playback have some real big shoes to fill because me and Bob, it, with our first game ever, was that epic. Uh, double overtime Laker Warriors, and it was the best best broadcast of a game I've ever seen ever in my life in any sport. That's all I'm gonna ever. say. Special. Ever. It was absolutely top, special. Top I notch. Lie. Great. Hey. I even I even did this for you, Bob. You can't handle the truth. Oh yeah, <laughs> you got it. Yes. You ask that button. You got that button. Needed That's that. all. All right. Uh, before we get into this rising stars, pimp named Slickback sent the super chat, and who would I be not? To read the man's super chat right here, right the now. He says, I know. I want to start by being a dub host. Um, speaking of that, shout out to dub. But Pip Nate Slipback said, I know we say ticket sounds crazy a lot, but he's right about LeBron. The cryptic tweet emoji, the passive aggressiveness, staring down the coach. If it's that bad, retire then, LeBron. Mm. Oh, wow. That's that's dramatic. Mm. You know, you know I, um, I, I tweeted out something cryptic today myself. Um, you know, I was inspired by LeBron. Um, and I tweeted out, I want I don't want to misquote myself, but I basically said, when history repeats itself, at some point, you have to look in the mirror. Yeah, that's directed at LeBron. It's directed at LeBron. If you already, always need new players and you always need a new coach, always, eventually you should look in the mirror, King. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and throw these teams up here right now. Um, we got a rookie team, and we have a sophomore team. Let me zoom in a little bit. This is the NBA Rising Stars team. Um, as you can see, the rookies have Bilal Koulibaly, Keontae George, Jordan Hawkins, Skeet Henderson, Chet Holmgren, Jaime Which, which Henderson? Which, which, which Henderson, Ron? Which Henderson? Scoot. That's what oh, I said, right? I just thought I heard you. I just wanted to make sure I heard, heard you right. Okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> but it's, it's no, it's no way they're playing this game serious. Like if they, if they're not just playing around, the sophomores are about to embarrass the, the rookies. This is not a close match. It's, it's it sounds ugly. like we have some early bias, but we'll we'll get around to why you think that, Ox. But Derek Lively the second, Brandon Miller, Brandon Pajinski, Kaysen Wallace, and Victor Hembinyama. That is the rookie team. Um, chat. I'm gonna put it put up a poll. And I'm gonna ask you guys to grade this on a scale of. A to D. But we got the sophomores now. Uh, Paulo Bancaro, Dyson Daniels, Jalen Duran, Jaden Ivey, Walker Kessler, Benedict Matherin, Keegan Murray, Shaden Sharp, Jabari Smith Jr., and Jalen Smith. Uh, Chilltown, right from the top, I got to ask you, which team is better and why? 
Well, the rookies aren't because the, none of the Thompson twins are on there. So I'm trying to figure out why they're not on the crew. But that that sophomore crew looks like they're just better overall. Uh, um, Bonchero, he might make the All Star team this year. Uh, both Jaden Ivy, I, I thought Jaden Ivy was going to be that that second player in the backcourt for Cade. Uh, Walker Kessler, one of the best defensive bigs in the game. Benedict Matherin starting on a playoff team. You you called uh, Victor Wembanyama him him Banyama and that would that would also translate to Keegan Murray because it would be Keegan Murray because he is him. Wow. Um, Shaden Shaden Sharp is a bit of a Shaden Sharp has been a bit of a disappointment for me, Mars. But in a game like this, I love the wide open game for him. And you already know how I feel about Jabari Smith and J Dub could very well make the All Star team this year too. So I think the sophomores serve these rooks. Hold on, you you. You got inside information from Fluent Junior, and you did. That's the only name you didn't mention. Didn't didn't Fluent Junior come on Fluent and Chill and tell you Dyson Daniels by year five will be an All NBA performer? He did tell me that. Yes, he did tell me that. The young fella know? told me that he's going to be an All Pro by year five. He did tell me that. Hey, hey hold yes, on, but Tom, y'all just let Chill get away with saying that sophomore team is better. That rookie team yes. look like they way better than the sophomore team. That rookie team got Wemby and Chat. That's defense right there, locked down. And you got a generational offensive talent in Wimby. Then you also have put that list back up, Ron. You also have Derek Lively Jr., who's dunking everything around the basket. All that's mm -hmm. getting cleaned up. Then you have Brandon Miller, who's solid on the wing. Then you have Jaime Hakez Jr., who's balling for the Miami Heat, even though they're struggling right now. Mm -hmm. So those guys right there, Jordan Hawkins can shoot the lights out the ball. He just ain't got a shot yet. Mm -hmm. uh, bro, I like that. The only the only guy I don't like on that squad really, pretty much is Skeet. And he's playing better than what he was playing at the beginning of the season. So I mean, to be on, uh, to be honest with you, bro, I like the rookies better than I like the sophomores. Well, you're talking about dunking everything. The rookies might be more talented. The rookies might be more talented, but the sophomore team is probably a, is a better lineup. That being said, any team with two Pistons on it is probably sure to lose. My biggest issue is I'm sick and tired of people putting Chet as a rookie. He's not a he's rookie. Not. He's not <laughs> man. He's not. He's not a rookie. It He's not, no, he is not. So, he's, in, he's, in, so in, he shouldn't be able to play in a sophomore game then next year, huh? Well, he should be playing. It's going to happen, yes. In year three. It's, that's, uh, but to I mean. your point, Ticket, you're talking about these dudes dunking everything around the basket like Jalen Duran and, and Walker Kessler, two of the best, two of, two of some of the better young bigs in the game, are not going to be at the rim. What are we talking about here? I don't know, man. I just think, uh, what, what, do you, what do you guys have to win me right now in the defensive race for defensive player of the year? I think he's up there. I already, no, told Miles, like I, I already told Miles. I already told Miles. I think I think we're gonna have a conversation about him being the best defensive player in the game in like the next couple. No, of no, years. I'm saying, but like where you have him right now? Like you have him one, two, three. You have no, him top three. Where you got? Um, maybe top five. I don't think he's the. I don't think he's the third best defender. Oh, who, who's who's over him right now? Your okay, mind? He's not a better defender than Bam. He's not a better defender than Rudy. He's not a right better now? defender than eight. Right today. Oh, let me stop today. you. Hold on, hold on. You said hold on. You saying Bam right now? Today. He's not a better defender than Bam this year. No, he's not a better defender than Giannis. He's not a better defender than he's not a better. What? Sorry, he's not a better defender than Giannis. He's not a better defender than Bam. He's not a better defender than Rudy. He's not a better defender than Anthony Davis. He's not a better defender than Have you seen his defense? I've seen his rim. I've seen his rim protection. That's what I've seen. A lot of the times, the stuff that he gets away with, he gets away with it because I'm just bigger than everybody else. I don't think he knows how to play defense yet. Mars looking like he disagree with you, bro. Because I don't, I don't believe you said that. He's, he's doing it today. He's doing it today because, again, it's kind of like being the bigger and faster and strongest dude in high school. I'm just bigger and faster and stronger than a lot of other but he's, people. But he doesn't know how to do what he's doing just yet. Once Mars, he actually think, warrants that, I think that we're going to be done having the conversation. Look, hold on. Floor, Mars, y'all think that y'all y'all really think that Bam is playing better defense than Wimby is this year? I don't think that's what a defensive player of the year award is about. So uh, hold, hold on. So what do you where, where do you guys where are you guys ranking Wimby at this year as far as the defensive player of the year award? And, and what is the game. defensive player of the year award about? Too? Can you start you, with that and then yeah, you don't win de you don't win defensive player of the year if your team is a bottom five defense. Like no matter how good of a defender you are, which I think Wimby is one of the well, what is Miami? Best. But uh, middle of the pack, I think. I think mm -hmm. I might be wrong. But like I we me and Troy spoke about this on playback. I said I think he's a top five defender in the world. I said that already. So today uh, Mars thinks yeah, he's that yeah, yeah. I, I already said I think he's a top five defender in the league. But he just he won't have a chance of winning it because the Spurs are the twenty fifth ranked defense. So, so but no, ma no well, matter how good he is. Hold on one second, hold on one second, Mars. So that goes against everything Chill says about A D. Because what are the Lakers ranked defensively? They gotta be one of the worst know. defensive teams in the league. 
And he okay. thinks AD recently they brilliant. have been. They're 14th right. right now. They're 14th. Right. But that's right. why right. Rudy, that's why Rudy's gonna win it. That's why. Right. Rudy's no, no. Gonna so win right. oh, oh, okay. So you got Rudy. Okay, I forgot about Rudy. So you think Rudy's yeah. gonna win it, Mars? Yeah, I think he's gonna win it. Is that what you, is that what you think, Flo and Chill uh, and Bobby? I think Rudy's gonna win it. Yes, I think. Yeah, I got. I got Rudy for sure. Vegas, Vegas ticket Vegas is rarely wrong and and Mars said it exactly it's not about who's the better defender it's about whose team ranks higher defensive rating whose uh analytics like advanced analytics they're going to look at for defensive rating and you got Rudy as a minus 230 as odds of winning right now in Vegas so he's got he's got the inside scoop when you look at the teams like he said Minnesota's ranked number one Boston is number three so you might get some Derek White votes in there um by the time you get to Wemby and the Spurs, where, where are they? But you, uh, but you guys bottom are five. around them too, though. So they, so they bottom, you, so guys bottom five, right? you guys are not criticizing. You, not, you guys are not critiquing the team that's around him. He doesn't have much around him to work with. My point no, is, we, is we understand saying, that. We understand that. That's oh. why I say he's an elite defender. But the award doesn't care about that. He is, a, he, he is a he is a great slash elite defender, but he's not going to get depoy votes because they don't look at your defense. As sad okay, as so that's so that's, 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 that's so so in essence, the influence in essence, then. So then we not even so so then in, in essence then my whole point was to say it was to say this so Mars you guys agree he's a top five defender he's just not gonna win the award so you talking about a top five defender and then over the last what three two two or three months he's been playing like a top ten offensive player in the league <clears throat> you could say that right over the last two two months mm -hmm. eight weeks from what we've seen I mean because I mean, he's averaging almost twenty six points a game the last what a month and a half Mars am I right so if he's there. Right? Shouldn't he be? My my point is, we talking about rook, rookie and, and sophomore. Shouldn't he be coming off the bench in the All Star team? If Zion made it his rookie year, Zion did not make the All Star team as a rookie. Zion only played twenty games as a rookie. Hold on, I oh, mean, my bad, my bad, my bad. That's right. The next year, Blake made Griffin it. made it. Blake Griffin. Blake Griffin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and he had the same stats almost as Blake Griffin. So who comes off the who comes off the off the All Star team ticket? If, if that's when. Hold on, Wimbanyama is a is a is a once in a lifetime type talent. And That's not playing. the point, Ticket. That's not the point. The point is, is of the All-Stars that are in the Western Conference, who comes off the roster? Because the, the bonus right ain't, the bonus ain't coming off the roster. I can tell Who's you that right, right now. now? Nope. Okay, so, so, so of the bigs, does he go ahead of Sabonis? No. Does he go ahead of Singoon? No. Does he go ahead I'll of... I'll put him ahead uh, of Singoon. I'm not sure that I... I'll put him ahead of Singoon. Because he's okay. leading his team. He's leading his team. <clears> and Singoon's <throat> team has fell off. If you would have told me this about a month, two months ago, I'd have been with you on Shangun because right. the, the Rockets were rolling. The Rockets have been in a deep fall. They're not even in. They're not in playoff contention right now. They're trying to get back up in it. And right. again, Wimby's leading that team. He's by himself. Yes, I, if I'm the NBA, why in the hell would I not have Wimby there? So when you we talking about the rookie and sophomore teams, I'm I think Wimby is all star level talent. The way y'all was talking about Chet. Chet could have been all-star level talent because he's on a number one team in the West, and normally they give you two team, two players from that team to the all-star game. And the way Yo, they've been talking it. about Chet, they've been Chet, acting like Chet is better than Wimby. Well, Chet, 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 Chet has the second best odds of winning deep way because he's on a, the number two ranked defensive team in the league. So, so Ticket, with your logic, you're saying that since Wimby's an all-star, that's why you have the rookies winning. And Chet, bro, listen. Okay, <laughs> when, think, think about one thing. Normally the top teams in the West, Get two all stars, normally. So it right. would be OKC would be Shea and Chet, right? A lot of people have been saying Chet is. They think Chet may be rookie <laughs> of the year over Wimby. Some people are saying that. Mm -hmm. My whole thing is that if that if that's the case, that that team is number one in the West. If they're number one in the West, and they play they play Denver tonight, right? They're number one yeah. in the West. Shouldn't he be? Shouldn't he be? Shouldn't those guys be in the all star? One of those two guys be in the all star game? You're right. They should put Victor instead of KD. I'm with you. <laughs> All right. I got to hear from everybody. I, I don't else. think KD will. I just think, I think the other guy, though, yes. I um, got to hear from everybody else um, who you think is going to win this game. Chill, you chimed in. Chill, you said the sophomores, correct? Yes, sir. Ticket, Ticket said the rookies. Uh, Ox, you were alluding to something along the lines <laughs> of the rookies shouldn't even show up to the game, right? Yeah, I got the sophomores. They just seem outmatched. Like, Chet, I mean, Chet and Wimby. But I think Jalen Duran is going to be too physical down there. So if it's if they're going to play a real game, like if they're going to really be playing ball, I got the sophomores. But you know, if, if they just kind of do the little all star game thing with this running down shooting, it could go either way. So 
But no, hold no, no. On, just, hold on. I just really want to. You know they're uh, not going to play a real game. Hold on. You know they're not going to play a real game. You I, know I don't know, though. The, the, the youngsters might no. go for it. No, they know. Them. You know this could be a glorified layup line. So knowing that it's going to be a glorified layup line, who you got winning? Let me see one more time, man. Let me see. Let me see <laughs> one more time. One more time. One more time. Like, let's be like, let's not lie. Got, to I mean, okay, you got, uh, Brandon. Uh, still, I'm still gonna go with the sophomores. Are you serious? You got, and, you, yeah. and, and this Hello. man set up here, Ron. Y'all set up here and let him get away with talking about Jalen Durant. He can't score. So how the hell is he gonna be effective? They're not. They're they they gonna, they gonna be throwing lobs. It's gonna be just a what? bunch of lobs. Carlo Ben Carroll going one what on one. So what do you think Wimby gonna do in an All Star game in chat? Then uh, chill town. <clears throat> I think he's gonna do the same thing. He's gonna be catching lobs. Same. He's, 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 I, man, I think shit, he's gonna be catching on, lobs, running to the rim. On, he's gonna Wimby be doing gonna the same thing. Wimby gonna be shooting three. I wouldn't be surprised when we get forty in the All Star game. And I mean, excuse me. So he's so so he's winning. So he's basically winning the All Star game MVP. Jalen Durant ain't doing that. Bob, I ain't Bob said he was. talking about Jalen Durant. I would have, I would have listened to Bob. He would have said, "Yeah, I got Keegan Murray getting about 30. But Jalen Durant, this dude can't. I ain't saying no. Ball, I ain't saying nobody getting thirty. I said he's gonna be physical. He's gonna be catching lobs. I ain't saying nobody getting thirty. I was, I was in the process of saying Paolo, Paolo Ben Carroll gonna go one on one with whoever he wants to, whenever he wants to, and get a bucket. Right. Nobody over there can guard him. I agree with you on uh, that. You know what I'm saying? Shedding Sharp gonna be, you know, doing his thing. Yo, I can speak about Keegan Murray, but I don't know if we got time for that. So we got a little bit of time. We got a little uh, bit me, of time. You know what I'm saying? Let me move on. Oh, Jabari, sure. Jabari, between Jabari, Keegan, and Paolo, that's any bu any bucket they want, whenever they want it. So right. You know what I'm Mars saying? Just, if they're just gonna be playing that style Ooh. of basketball, bro, the sophomores gonna run them off the court. Mars Black me. Um, I simply just want to ask you which team is more talented. Mm. Um, this game is stupid. <laughs> no, what's your problem with the rookies and sophomores game? Why is it dumb? Right. Uh, where, where's it's the problem with Warren and Thompson? Huh? Oh, where's okay. With Warren and Thompson, it's a it's right. a dumb game. I don't know. I don't know how they don't make the team. But so it's not a dumb game because they're playing it. It's because those two. It's dudes a dumb game because they're not playing. Yeah, like who cares about this game? Right. Sure. No, one of no, one of them for sure. Because look, they got they got one less player than them, don't they? Yeah. No, they got on the sophomores. Sophomores do. But no, it's a, it's a, yeah. it's a stupid. They got some oh, G League they're guys. Rookies, too, they're rookies. They also have some G League guys, rookies. guys too. Chet, some G Chet should move over. Chet should move over to sophomores where he belongs, and then throw one of the Thompsons in there. And the rookies. Yeah, there's, there's no way you're telling me Scoot Henderson has played better than Cam Whitmore. That's just not true. So, but it's whatever. Um, but more talented, but I think. Who would you rather see in this game? Cam Whitmore. Cam. You think he's more I ain't trying to see. I ain't trying yeah. to see Skeet Henderson, man. Skeet Henderson does not deserve to be. What's exciting? What's exciting about a point guard who can't shoot? Thank you, bro. He a hey, a hey, fluent. He a hey, we haven't been cooking him enough. He has been. Y'all, 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 y'all being nasty. That is it's just not true. Not it's true. It's it's not true. Bus, it's it's not true. It's, it's not true. He's, he's, he's actually playing he's a bus. really well. He's a bus, bro. No, he has not. He's not a bus. Come on. Yeah, I'm not saying all that. I'm just saying come with me. No, he's not. He's a bus, man. Ticket. No, he isn't. Ticket. That's not true, yo. He's a bus, man. You wrong on that. So what? You are you are wrong on that. No, he has not been a bus. Have you watched the man play? Yes, I have, and actually, he's been he's been getting he's consistent. He's trash, man. You know, he, no, he's he, he been not, playing all right. Take it. He's, he's definitely not, not a bust. He hasn't he it's hasn't started true. his career great, but I'm not going to call someone a bust in four years. I'm not going to do that. So what? Hold on. So what's, what's, what's the ceiling, Mars? What's the ceiling there, Mars? <coughs> a lot would have to go right. But, what's the uh, ceiling? Well, his ceiling. I mean, anyone's ceiling could be unrealistic. No, his I'm asking you, what do you is... think his ceiling is? His ceiling. All right, Mars. How, how about this one? Can't even answer. Because if I say idea? his ceiling is, imagine if he manages to figure out his jump shot. Imagine if he becomes a better playmaker. Like his ceiling is, if everything goes perfectly right, if his ceiling, if he reaches his ceiling, he's a top five point guard in the league. I just don't think he's going to reach the ceiling. So, Mars, this is where we are right now with him. Right, this is where we are. We're, we're, we're at an inconsistent school. Right, one minute you'll get twenty-two and, and and nine, and then the next game you'll get eleven and six, and then you'll get something like seventeen and eight, and then you'll get nine and four, and that's just from being young and that's trying to figure the game out. So as time goes on, I think his game will improve. I do think that he'll get that jump shot in that mid-range down. I do think that he'll become a better defender. So with that being said, with the twelve and six or the twelve and five that you're getting right now, is it ridiculous to think that Scoot Henderson, at his best, could be an eighteen and eight guy? No, he, he can he can probably put up. Man, that's an all star in the Western his, Conference. I'm that's an all star. Town. At his at his best, that's not a bust. At his best, I think he's probably like 15, 15 and six. 
That's not mm. 15 and 6. He he's doing that ticket. He's 12 and 5 right now. Bro, and that's how I told you. He's almost at his height now. No, not bro, at 20 that years old. Like that, no, man, bro. Wrong on I'm gonna tell you something, bro. I'm gonna tell you something, man. I'm gonna tell you something, man. I've been watching them games from Portland. They get ready to play the Bucks tonight. Watch what he do tonight. He ain't gonna do nothing again tonight. He's gonna have probably about two points again tonight, <laughs> shooting 25% from the field. And ain't nobody gonna say nothing. Everybody gonna give him a pass. He number two overall pick. Come on, bro. Why, well, guess man. Dame can't. Pick. Dame can't guard him. No, he can't. What can you mean? Scoot Dame guards can't guard him. Scoot That's guards what I mean. Scoot Scoot guards yeah, no, yeah, he's gonna, he, he he gonna, he, he gonna be able to do his thing, and especially because what? Because today, tonight's the game. Dame come back to bro. To the if the Blazers game, didn't you know, have Malcolm, it's Brock, a lot. This game. Hold on, but this game. This game. It's you know, Scoot. Scoot got to prove something today. Scoot got. Scoot got to show something today because that's that's uh Dame's return to the Motor Center. So that you know, school gotta let him know. Like it's the reason we got we got came off of you. It's the reason you over there, man. It was red flag five that he's a career season in five guy. Get out of here. That's what he's gonna be yeah. for, a, for his a, life. A, 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 for it was red flags player. when he fluent. It was red flags when he came in the league. When he was in the G League, he wasn't shooting well. He wasn't playing well. He had no jump shot. They overhyped him up coming out of the G League just to put him up in the number two overall pick. He was overhyped coming from the G League, bro. Go back and watch the G League game. Who's not playing against? He's not playing against those plumbers in the 90s who couldn't shoot. He's playing in a league where everybody can shoot. You got to be able to shoot. He's done. Do it. He's 19 years old. It's so Fair. inconsiderate. Bro, he don't have to come it, bro. Up here and say that a teenager. Bro, I, 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 he's a teenager. He's a teenager. We do you know, this. He's a teenager. We do this a lot. The young players, say he's a we just say they're going to figure out how to shoot, and then they don't figure out how to shoot. But he's like, not figuring out how to happen. shoot isn't just something that happens to every young player. A lot of people improve, though. At a, at a lot of people have to. Going from successful. terrible to anything Did better Russell than Westbrook improve? <laughs> to become, <laughs> to, 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 to get to, get to adequate. Hall of Famer. Pick it. What are we no, talking about? No, no, no. About? I'm talking about his he jump shot. No, he's talking about his jump shot. He's talking about his jump shot. Shoot. Mars, if you're going to be terrible, 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 how many people who came in as terrible shooters came anything above average? How many? Thank you, Ron. He doesn't oh, no. get to the basket. He doesn't question. get to the basket. I have no idea how many. He doesn't that's, finish that's, the bottom rim, Ron. I couldn't know that. He doesn't have the same type list, of athleticism. You list the guys that can't the shoot. You list the guys that can't out, shoot. The only ones that ever made anything of themselves do other things exceptional. He doesn't. He, he doesn't, bro. He, he can't does. finish the bottom rim. He, he, he's not athletic. He's not years athletic. old. What are we talking about? I think he can develop the other parts of his game. I just don't believe he's going to develop a jump shot. Athleticism is going to be going down. It's not going up. Thank you, bro. It's going like, up. For, it's going up for a couple of years. Now. His athleticism is going up right now. He's only nineteen. He's a baby. Five years he's, in five he's getting, years. He's getting stronger, the faster, and bigger for the good. next for the next four 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 to five years of his life. He's definitely improving right yeah, but now. He's not as good of an athlete as I thought he was. But he. So can, why he why did you why did you think he was a, such a good a athlete to begin with? Um, because I saw him in the open court and he looked a lot against more lesser competition. Then I see it. Then I Man. see him in the half court in his first more step, more comp really more competition doesn't make you less athletic. No, no yeah, I mean, I yeah, he's a no, that's, 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 that's true. true. No, that's true. Because a, a, man, a man Thompson played in OTE and he's one of the most athletic people I've ever seen in my life. So like. The low competition doesn't mean anything, but when you're going against lesser athletes, you can look more athletic. I don't think Mars, I was if you would have told the truth, Mars. I think I, think I just I think I just got tricked by how he looked. Mars, if you would have told the truth, you would have said his ceiling is. You, when you I play said guys his ceiling age, is I look athletic. His ceiling is speedy class. Age, I look athletic. When I play guys your age. I don't look athletic anymore. So yes, your competition does. Thank you. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I, I that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's, that's still a crazy tech. It's still a crazy tech. His ceiling is speedy clacks, so, bro. It's so, it's so early for that. It's so, it's so early for that. That's the ceiling. Speedy clacks, bro. Speedy clacks, bro. Hey, I ain't clapping either. I'm not, and listen, straight, his ceiling is guys like Mario Chalmers, speedy clacks, and guys like that. That's his ceiling. That's the height of his level, bro. I'm just telling the truth, bro. I'm not lying. He don't listen. We talk about, hold on. When we talk about Russ, Russ would have never made it in the league if he didn't have that supreme athleticism to overcompensate for his deficiencies. This guy doesn't have that. He doesn't have any of the other stuff that those other guys had that was great. They didn't have a jump shot. Most of those guys that was great, they didn't have a jump shot. Their athleticism got them by, bro. Look at Dennis. I hate to break it to you. Hold at Dennis 19 years old, hold school's Dennis better than Russ. Right now, Ron. His at 19 years old, school is better than Russ. I, I hate to break Man, it to you. He's going to end up being just like Dennis Smith Jr. Hey, Fluent, you mark what I said. He's going to end up being just like Dennis Smith Jr. And the only reason why Dennis Smith Jr. is still in the league today, Fluent, you know this, because his athleticism. Because he's extremely athletic. His athleticism allows him to do things. And he plays defense. And he plays defense. Because of his last name. And he plays D. But Skeet, he doesn't do that. Because of his pedigree. 
Yeah, Scoo, Scoo Henderson. Well, a rookie. I don't expect a rookie point guard to really be good defensively, especially at his size. So I'm not surprised by that. But it's, the athleticism not being as good as I thought it was is why I think. So who had a better rookie yeah. season, Mars? Him or De or, De or uh, uh, Dennis Smith Jr. Because I think Dennis Smith Jr. had a better rookie season, and he was a number four overall pick. I think he was at number seven. But yeah, then um, Dennis Smith Jr. had a better rookie year for sure. And Dennis Smith Jr.'s rookie year wasn't great. But, and he got uh, worse, right? His minutes went down. Yeah, that's what happened. What will happen to Ski? Yo, we um, talking about it being a number this three pick. Crazy to say this about a dude. Bro. I mean, it's if, not if crazy, we doing, bro. yes, it is it crazy. Because crazy, if we bro. doing that, it, it is, man. Because if we doing that about him, we don't even know how good he is. We he haven't even good. seen him develop. You, yes, he is. Sick. And if he wasn't good, then he wouldn't be. He wouldn't be thirty three in a game. He wouldn't be twenty two in a chill, game. Chill, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, chill, chill. I'm gonna kick some. I'm gonna kick some real to you, chill. He's lucky he's not playing on a good team because he was playing on a good team. He got the league in three years. That actually he's might help him. He's lucky playing on a good team. Look, the reason why. The reason why. No, Sick. You're not gonna tell me that right there. He wouldn't get minutes if he was on the Rockets. Well, absolutely. And and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, Mars. That actually be good for him because what Ticket just said. If it wasn't for Malcolm Brogdon, then they wouldn't be winning. Well, the fact that he's able to sit behind Malcolm Brogdon and learn the game, that's actually helping him. So if he was on a good team where he was playing behind Fred Van Fleet, if he was playing behind somebody like that where he could understand the game and learn the game, I think he'd be even better I moving disagree. forward. He wouldn't be playing behind Fred Van Fleet. He'd be in the G League. He'd be in the G League, right. I disagree, but bro. He would be in the G League momentarily, just like Cam was in the G League. But he would eventually come up. And then he Cam showed that he was able to get able to, Cam, yes. First of all, Cam got in the rotation because Dylan Brooks and Tari Eason were hurt. So that's how, he, that's how he came back from the G League. He still would have been in the And he ball. So we got lucky. Well, Cam got lucky that there was injuries. And then Cam right. showed that he was able to play. Right. Fred Van Vliet has not been hurt the whole year. So Fred, there's no... And then Aaron Holiday is, was the backup point guard. And then mm -hmm. Amen Thompson came in after dealing with his injuries. And then he's there. Scoot Henderson wouldn't play for us. And that's not, a, that's not a knock on him, but he would be in the G League. And if, he was in the G and, 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 and if he was in a G League, Mars, I don't think that that's a bad thing because people talk about the G League like it's a bad thing. How? Go he just came from the G League, man. And so what if he just came from the G League? He's not ready yet. So what? So hold on. So hold on. on. But chill. My girl asked for a second. I got the answer. I'm going to play a number two from the G League. I'm suspended for the G League. How you go from the G League, Mars? Get drafted number two overall and then get sent back to the G League. You're a scrub, man. Cut it out, man. Stop it's capping, bro. Really. You don't it's get drafted not, number two. Go to a team and then get sent right back to the G League, bro. Oh. Cut it out, man. So, so all of this, chill, chill town. The last thing I'm gonna say to you is this about this, bro. You say this, bro. I'm telling you, he's lucky he's on a bad team where he gets to go out there and actually play and make mistakes. Because if he wasn't, if he was on a good team and he had pretty, he'd be out of the league like Adam Morrison was, he'd be out of the league like a lot of these other guys are, bro. He's lucky he's in that situation because if he wasn't, his ass would have been he'd be overseas somewhere, bro. And I'm telling you the truth, man. He ain't no he's number two overall you, pick. You, you, you don't, don't, you don't, don't number three. Number, number three. Number three number three. And get tomatoes and then take them back and, and then go you, bro. tomatoes again. You leave them. You're done. He's done. And I agree with Mars. Cam Whitmore should have been up there before him. That dude ain't. Come on, man. Stop giving these dudes handouts, man. Same. But I'm not saying I've given up on Skew. I'm just saying this year he hasn't been very good. That's what I'm saying. We're we're gonna get back to the rookies and sophomores. We still got a lot to talk about, and I have more questions for each and every one of you. But we got some good super chats to get to. Starting with the good brother MP13. Uh, MP said MB was clearly compromised. Do you think it was his call or the medical staff's choice to have him play? Because if he was out there trying to save his MVP case at the cost of being healthy for the playoffs, it's sad. That's a lie because the coach came out to the post-game press conference and the coach said that Joel and B was fine before the game. He said he had no injury, no problem. He was fine. He said Joel told him he was fine. Go listen to the post-game press conference uh, with uh, uh, Nick Nurse after the game last night. They asked Nick Nurse, was Joel and B hurt coming into the game? He said, no, nah, Joel and B was fine. He it's came up to me and said he was fine. He's ready to go. He Which had is no crazy problem. because a couple of days ago when they played in Denver, he, he was trying was to go. He couldn't even get off the floor. Yeah, he, he couldn't get off was, the floor. MB yeah, that's clearly days, not yeah, yeah, chill town. That's cap. So six years in a row, he ducks. He gets to duck the. the, the, the he was in. Been six he, he was years. absolutely. It hasn't been it has, six. One, years. it hasn't been six years. No, no, he it's played, been four years. He, four in years the twenty nine in the twenty nineteen twenty twenty season is the last time he played Denver in Denver. The next year he was hurt. It was in a stretch of fifteen games that he missed. The Denver game was just in the middle of that stretch. What about the year after that? The year after that, again, it was in a stretch of games that he missed. He missed a bunch. He missed like 12 to 15 games again. The Denver game was in the middle of that. He missed that game. Last year was the year where he played the game before the Denver game, missed the Denver game, then played the game after. That and game. He ducked again this year. Yeah, that game. Cool. Give him, give him the blame you want. This year, 
If you think Embiid should have even played last night, he's not right. He can't. No, he said, hold on, hold on. But Nick, 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 look, watch but the Nick, game. Embiid was not right. Nick Nurse lied then. Nick Nurse lied. Watch Embiid. He can't play. Don't get hold on, Mars. Don't get mad at me. I'm not getting mad at you. Nick Nurse said what he said. I'm not arguing with what Nick Nurse said. I'm telling you. Forget what Nick Nurse said. You just saw you just saw Embiid last night. He couldn't play. He could tick 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 it. Forget what Nick Nurse said. You saw Embiid last night. What did you think of him? What I always think of him, he's fool's gold. He's going to do this shit the regular season, put up 35. I ain't average, talking about the numbers. numbers. No, 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 no. Stop right there. Look, Stop right there. I'm not talking about the numbers. Right. What he you never, saw last hold on, night, hold on, hold on. what did you see last night from I, him? He never, physically, hold on. I'm, I'm, physically I'm, what did you I'm, see I'm from him I'm going to tell you the night? truth. He never looks right to me because he's always flopping around the court, so I don't know when he's right and when he's not. The dude is always flopping and moving crazy around the court anyways, chill tell. This is what I'm used to with him. With, 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 with Embiid, you never know if he's hurt or if he's ready to roll. The dude, always something with him. His stomach hurts. He got the flu. His, his, his face is broke. Uh, his arm is hurting. His knee is hurting. He got tendonitis. It's always something until he play a bad team and score 70. So, 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 so check this out, Floyd. So he scored 70 against the Spurs, Floyd. Did you see anything wrong with him in that game when he was stat padding late in that game, Floyd? Did you see anything wrong with him? Then three, four days later, all of a sudden he's hurt. He can't get up down the court. Man, get the hell out of here, man! What the hell you think you fooling, man? Ticket, this is nonsense. No, ticket, this is nonsense. Nah, nah, I'm watching him. I'm, I'm, I'm watching him last night. Hold on. Look like this is bullshit, yo. You never, you never get hurt after a game, or you're yeah, sore so after you, a game, right, or you. Never, right, you've never, you've never, right. you've never played well in two days. Pro days you're in the man has set. Hold on. The man has seventy points. Did y'all see any problem with him when he was doing all that foolishness on the Spurs? You act. You, you are honestly gonna sit here. Yeah, when did he get hurt? Yeah, when did he get hurt? Ticket, when did he get hurt? Honestly, sit here and say to me, after. "You play pro basketball. How many when times? When did he get hurt? I'm telling you right now, ticket. How many times have you played in a game where you were awesome, and the next day you barely could get out of bed? Barely. So he dropped, he dropped seventy. Barely he could get out of bed. Because you hurt so bad. The, the report, the re I, I'll tell you what the report was because Embiid's been dealing with this knee the whole years. They've been load managing him with the knee because I I believe it's I don't know if it's tendonitis, but I think it's probably somewhere along those lines. So it's gonna just the more you play on it, the more pain you're gonna be in. After the Spurs game, apparently Embiid wasn't even meant to play in the Pacers game. The his next game against the Pacers, they lost that game. Embiid didn't look right in that game. Go watch him. Embiid didn't look great in that game. That didn't look like Joel Embiid. He played in that game. That's what happened. He played in that game. He didn't look right. He then didn't play in the Denver game, probably for the same reasons as why he shouldn't have played in the Indiana game. He then missed the Portland game, probably for the same reason he didn't play in the Denver game. He then came back against the Warriors. I'm not saying Nick Nurse is a liar. I believe the coaching staff probably said Embiid is okay to go. They, that's probably what they told him. No, no, no. Nick he Nurse was probably told, told by, the coach, by the coaching staff, by the medical staff, Embiid can go. But no, then no, you said, watch Embiid, Embiid out there him. against the Warriors. Embiid could not go. He said, hold he on, hold on. Right. And, hold Mars, on. Mars, if this mandate wasn't going on right he now, he'd be out for a month. If this mandate wasn't going on for a month. Embiid said he was, was, was going to play against Denver and then he declared he could league MVPs, if this mandate wasn't going on, he'd be out for a month. Yo, he's I'll be out for a month. Hold up right quick, Hold up right quick, Hold up right quick, Dickie. Hold up, 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 Hold Embiid playing to just the social pressure and obviously the new keep it real though, Ox man. You are you the that, one of the that, last of a dying breed. Keep it real, Ox. Come I on, think man. I think it probably I think it probably has something to do with it early on. Like when he was if if Mar says it's on the lines of like a tendonitis, it's you know a real serious tendonitis, and he was probably just trying to play through it, trying to you know trying to get get those games in. Uh, I can I could definitely see that, but as it as it's already getting close, he got he's probably on the scale right now. Like okay, I'm, I'm I got this many games left. It's highly unlikely that I'll, I'll make it anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and park it because it hurts. You know what I'm saying? So, so you hold probably, on. So you really think? Hold on. So so I'm gonna ask y'all this question. What? So he when is the game he dropped seventy Mars? That was against the, the Spurs, the, right? The game before the Pacers game that he right. Shot, and you, know you okay? He probably, so, so, he so probably, he probably heard it playing. Hold, 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 hold on, hold on, fluent. Fluent, because you don't. Know, just why I told you, you're necessary, bro. I don't care what we got to do. I have to have you on here on a daily basis because these dudes are hella five cap. When did he get hurt from the Spurs? Did you see any injury with this dude late in the Spurs game when he was low? I mean, when he was step pad. Do you know? Do you see, know how see. Do you know how things like ten tonight as well? He, he, yes, he I does. And he's a that's why I don't, that's why I don't yes, get why you're asking these questions. I'll he answer your question. That's why I don't get no, it. Does, I'll answer your question. No injuries come from someone punching you in the face and then you have a broken jaw. Like, that's why no injuries happen.
He bro, probably it's a non contact injury. Well, an injuries happen no. after the fact, and you're just in pain. Like, go but, ahead. But, but Morris, but Morris, as big as he is, bro, it's probably, it's probably at this point with the knees he got. There's probably some arthritis stuff in there. You know how you know the Hoopers how is that something that can pan, pan on your knees up like, yeah. What? It's probably, it's probably, hey, hey, hold on. He you know, probably got the Bob. arthritis in his kneecap. Bob. He got the tendonitis like in the Bob. in the patella right there. Bob, his knees I, I probably like are through, bro. How like, come on, bro. This dude, this dude, seven feet tall. He's he's two in the mid. So I don't know two Ox, sticks. Hold on, hold on, he's a big dude. Ox, why you gonna do this? Why you gonna do this to me, though, Ox? I want you to think about what I do to you. Hold on, no, no. I want you to think about one thing, though, bro. Think about this, though, Ox. You okay. saying all this stuff about Joel and B, right? Mm -hmm. Why are we complaining about dudes not playing? We live in an era where it's better sports, better science, My better technology, better built shoes, better trainers, better all of this stuff. Everything is high tech. Everything is better technology. How the hell are these dudes more hurt? You still you got, got a body. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It don't. It don't matter. It don't matter about AI and all that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, all these other tendonitis. Dudes, you can't do nothing about season. arthritis and they tendonitis. Going through the same stuff. Come on, yeah, man. yeah, but it's different. We had this conversation during the summertime, and you was actually using Joel Embiid as a dude that's old school, and he was no, going. It's, it's on my channel. It's on my channel I know in the videos. No, no, I got, not, hey, every, I got not, everyone, three not everyone. Not everyone is AC you know Green, Mikel Bridges who can play every. Game. Everyone, was everyone, then, was then, everyone was then. No, everyone, everyone was wasn't. Everyone, everyone was everyone not. Everyone, 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 everyone wasn't. Everyone everyone wasn't. There was there was people that was playing through injuries, but even in the eighties and the seventies, if you got injured and you couldn't play through it, I know you're gonna give me three excuses. When Isaiah Thomas played and this person, that person played, but that's not, that that's not how it was. If you got, if you got, if you, if you got, if you got injured in the seventies and you couldn't play, then you couldn't play. A lot of if people miss seasons. Fools, a lot of people miss if games. If he's been dealing with bad knees, should he have been stat pad in a seventy point game? Fluent. Th think according about to you, this. yes. Th think according to you, fluent. yes. They're according to you, yes. Ticket, ticket, ticket. If he, if he felt no, listen. If he felt good, because you're right, there wasn't a point in that 70 point game where he looked off or in pain. But then days go by, he plays another game, and you, and if he does, I don't know what he has. If he does have tendonitis or arthritis or whatever in his knees, he's a big man. You as a big man know you can wake up one day feeling really good. You can wake up the next day and my knees hurt like a mother, and I can't play. So, so now. Man, so, 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 does that let him off the hook? No. Do I think that there's probably games that he would have missed this season that he that he played in because last season there wasn't this whatever 60-something game mandate? I think he has. And that's probably hurting him in the long run because he's just the type of guy that needs days off. The same that thing with that punk, the same thing with that punk Tyler, Tyler, or whatever his name is, or uh, Holland, Tyrese Holland Burton. He running his <laughs> rabbit ass mouth last night talking about some, yeah, it's a stupid rule, man. You know what I'm saying? It's a dumb rule. No, it ain't no dumb rule. Get your ass out on the court, man. People paying their hard earned money, man. And see, oh, I ain't even like, docking his chain. You know, see, this if is this he, the if people you. are hurt, they shouldn't be forced to play when they when they have the they risk were forced of to play back that then. much money. There was less money. Think, they I weren't think, forced to play, they chose to play. They weren't forced. For, no one forced, you, no one wrong. forced John Stockton to play 82 man, games. Do is, man, he did wrong. that because Eric he could and he wanted to. So, no, so, so let me ask, hey, Ron, let me ask you one last question, Ron. When I was cooking up last year, I Ron, think it's you remember everybody? Ron, uh, hold you up, remember? right, right, quick, ticket. Go, go ahead, go ahead, fluent. He gonna say I, something. to Ticket, you gotta ask your question, and we gotta move I'm, on. I think it's a dumb rule. And I think player let, let the players play whatever the hell they want to play. But the people who vote, but the people who vote should take into account. How many games they missed and why they missed those games because they, they're they're supposed to be the ones that make that decision. You can't force them. I don't like that at all. You know what? You only want to play forty four yeah. games. Cool. You're not making any damn list. Period. No, don't make. That's how voting. That's how voting. You remember? They've been doing that. They've been. No, nah, yes, it is. Fluent. When's the last time we seen someone play half the seat around half forty one to forty seven games? I make yeah. the All-NBA team. When's the last time you seen it? Scottie Pippen, 1998. So 25 all, all years. All-defensive first team, 44 so games. 25 so, so, so 25 years. Deservedly so. Deservedly so. They do, but deservedly they take so. that into account. It doesn't but, but, happen. But, but, 25 but, but, years. Here's the abuse I take, right? And that's what I say. I, you should I, took all the, I took all of the abuse for what I said about Kalai. Ka Kalai Leonard, right? Over the mm -hmm. last couple of years with load management. And what did I say was about Fluent? I said it was about that goddamn on money. Didn't I say that? As soon as they took his money from this fool, played every game. But it was he supposed to have degenerate knees. He couldn't play no more. Yeah, he couldn't work. walk. He had tendonitis. This all the stuff he told me before. I was right last time, and I'm right this time. So, so are we, are we talking about Kawhi? We talking about Joel? Who we talking about? We got to move on. Real quick, Ron. Real quick, Ron. Real quick, Ron. Real quick, Ron. So if Joel Embiid, if this was a contract year, he'd be playing. Do it. Do hey. Do do. We're in a contract because Kawhi Leonard was in a is in a contract year before he signed his extension. So if Joel Embiid is in a contract year this year, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Is that the? Do a bank got money? Okay, so I'll... 
happen. Oh, there's right. No, there's no way yeah. you can see how Embiid looks and think he's fine to play. Bro, he, Mar- he, he looked bro, like he had a piano on his back. We got to We got to move on. We got to move on. Ron, am I illogical, Ron, for saying that they saying that this there was so this man scored 70. He's in the game late when he doesn't need to be. He scored 70. Everybody's cheering, celebrating. You gonna tell me the very next game I can't play no more? <laughs> I scored 70. I can't play no more. <laughs> no, I'm saying are y'all out of y'all mind? These dudes are, are conning the NBA, bro. The legends are rolling over in their grave, bro. These dudes are conning the NBA. Right, stop capping for money. billionaires and let these men get their money, man. Yeah, man, it amazes me some ben of the things Simmons? you say. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all criticize Ben Simmons. Money, y'all criticize Ben Simmons, bro. Them, Ben Simmons, all of these dudes, bro. Y'all have allowed these yeah, dudes. I love to see young up. brothers getting money, man. Let, let them get yeah, that money. I don't criticize Ben Simmons for being actually hurt. This is the perfect time for me to shout out playerschoicemerch.com. If you haven't got a chance to get over there, go ahead. Grab some, cop some, support your favorite show on YouTube. Just like you in here watching, supporting, and liking the video, right? Well, if you haven't liked the video, slap that like button. Um, Playback. We're getting it in on Playback right now. You can catch us on Playback every day. Yesterday, Chill was on there watching the Pacers and the Celtics game. It was a good watch. And Mars and Dub were on there after open gym, and they were they had an agenda to push. Um. Alan R sent through a super chat. I mean, Alan L sent through a super chat and said, Hey, Mars, can we speak on what we watched on playback yesterday? Dub playback, dub Mars, L dub. Um, why is it dub playback, dub Mars, and L dub Mars? Because dub's an L. What are you talking about? That's why. Mm. Okay. What, we what happened yesterday? On playback? Oh, we were just um, dis- discussing how um, the older generations used to talk about the 90s. Um, and how it's very eerily similar to how the older generation now talk about today's game. Um, now that, that was that was kind of like the main point of discussion. Um, we pulled up some quotes from certain players. Um, we had some footage of Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell discussing the game in the nineties, and then we just started talking about how. Um, not many pe- not many of the older generation respected the 90s as it was unfolding but now we have the older generation speaking of the 90s as if it was the holy grail of basketball um it was very it was very funny to see um especially when i listened to some of the conversations up here how that was not the feeling at the time as it was happening but maybe it's revisionist history maybe all those old people have died so now these old people run the narrative who knows but it was, that's what we was really Really disgusting. Let me ask yeah. you a question, Mars, really quickly. So mm-hmm. Chamberlain and Russell were talking about the uh, younger generation or, or that specific generation, just from a competitive standpoint. Now, today, you have these guys talking about the older generation in a different way. Would that would that be contributed to social media? Because everybody's talking about how, how whack the 90s were, how whack the 80s were. And these guys who were bigging up the 80s actually played during that time. Um, I mean, it's possible. Um, I think when you listen to what Will Chamberlain and Bill Russell said, I don't think, I think it was less competitive, and especially from Will's perspective, less competitive and more so disdain for how the game of basketball was. Um, and even we pulled up some quotes, we pulled up some quotes from people. Who's never said anything true in his life. If you're going to listen to Wilt, who's probably never said anything true in his life, eh, you got to take that with a grain of salt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was something. That was something I figured would happen, where we kind of discredit the people who give the. Oh, just will. No, I yeah, just that, will. That's why, yeah, um, that's why. No, that's why don't listen think. to him when, Wait, he, when it comes yeah, to will. Yeah. Do not no, listen I'm, to him. I'm, I'm with him on the hundred point no, game. Me do and, not and me listen and to him. We don't even think Will is a real person. So I don't anything that you say about Will. I don't one in out the other. I don't listen to a word that's on That's why. That's why. That's why we also brought up quotes. Okay, yeah. Okay, hold on. Okay, yeah. Hold on. Will could fly. Will could fly. He had a fifty-inch vertical, which means his head could go over the rim or over the backboard. He scored hundred points. He had you know twenty thousand. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure, Will. Sure, Will. You, you could bench press 500 pounds more than the strongest man in the world. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. Everything he even says though, is true. Even though, even though he did it in front of Arnold Schwarzenegger, who confirmed yeah, it. This is Mr. Olympia. Oh, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did it in front of him. Two people can lie. Two people can lie. Yeah, no, no, really hate lies. Those why, would, why would Mr. Olympia lie? The why eight-time not? Mr. Olympia. Why would he lie about it? I don't know. Why would he sleep with his housekeeper and have a baby? I don't know. He does crazy things. 
Oh, yeah, that's exactly. Like, like, we don't, but we don't yeah, that, that, that's all it really was. We was just talking about how people spoke but the, about but the, 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 the reason why I asked that question, Moss, is because from a competitive standpoint, I mean, I saw Will, I, I, those interviews that you guys are talking about, I saw Will and Bill Russell. Of course, from a competitive standpoint, Will is looking at Shaq like, boy, when I was 22, I ought to kick your ass. That's how he's probably looking at Shaq at, at, as, as a younger man. But when we move forward, to 2024, a lot of the guys that played in the 90s, they hear today that these guys in the 90s were plumbers. These guys, there wasn't any competition in the 90s. It was only Jordan. And these guys hear that. So, of course, they weren't hearing that back then as much. They weren't hearing that Elgin Baylor played only in, uh, only played against these many guys. They didn't hear about Jerry West playing against these many guys. They didn't hear that that much. And I'm sure if they did, more of those guys would be talking more about those guys back then better than they do today. Because if I'm not mistaken, I'm 100% confident Dr. J got both Jerry West and Elgin Baylor in his top 10 all time. Yes, he does. Listen, yeah, the, listen, yeah. The everyone the, seems the to the praise day. their era as the best and then say the subs the following eras seem to be a lot worse. That that, that well, was really the point. Well, one, thing is never one thing has never changed. One thing has never changed. People say stuff to get and now in today's era, likes and views in the, in that era to get more interviews and to get and to sell more papers. Wilt said because what he wanted to say to get attention, just like you got guys like Gilbert Arenas talking smack about how this generation is significantly better than when I played. Because what does he want? Because he wants the likes and the views. It's that's what all it is. It's all nonsense. You are a smart enough guy, Mars. Go watch and make your own decision. Was was Wilt's era better than the nineties? My my point wasn't about who I agreed with. My point was about. Um... My point was simply about how the older errors will always say the, the new the following errors are, so, are much worse. But, but that's and not that true. And what's, what's, what's happening today with the older errors discrediting this error is the exact same thing that was happening to their error at the time. And not just by Walt Chamberlain and Bill Russell. I brought we brought up quotes that Dennis Rodman said while he was playing in the era about how the error was watered down. We brought up quotes from Jerry Sloan about saying similar things. It was a very common talking point as the 90s was unfolding that it was one of the more watered down eras in basketball but now you let anyone tell it now these 40 year olds who grew up in the 90s they'll say it was the best era and it's just funny how that was not the common opinion from the older generation as it was unfolding but now as they seem to be able to dominate the the space with the media guys like Stephen a smith or even guys up here like ticket chill town i'm not saying you guys do that i'm just saying with you guys are able to control the narrative the 90s gets put in a light that it wasn't being put in at the time it was happening by the people who were either playing in it or the people who had already played in the 60s oh. or watched the 60s and seen the 90s, they said this was the worst era. That's what they said. But so you kind of like kind of like what's happening today, where everybody says yeah. there's no defense, the game sucks. So in 30 yeah. years, they say, wow, what a great era it was. In 30 years now, people will look back at the 2020s and say this era is far superior to the 2050s. For whatever rule changes there'll be, maybe there'll be 40 teams in the NBA, and they'll say this expansion ruined the league. There's only two good players on every team. Maybe that's what they'll do. So that that's the point I'm getting at. Every era seems to just get looked down, looked down on as it's going on, and then gets praised down the line. That's the same thing that happened with the 90s. Same thing that's happened that's going to happen with this era. Same thing that happened with the 60s. That, for, that, for, that was the, the, point the, the expansion era was not the 90s. It was the 70s. Yeah, the, 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 the 70s went from what? 8 to yeah, 23, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. 8, 8 23, yeah. <laughs> but the 90s got criticized for that too. And that, that was the point we was getting. It was just funny how that seems to get forgotten in history. So it kind of... Yeah. Y'all be sure to continue to tap into Open Gym. Um, well, Open Gym and Playback and Open Gym on Playback. When they go and break down the facts, I'm sure they – I'm sure, you know, Mars is a pesky little guy. I'm sure he got something else that he's about to reveal to you guys here in this next upcoming weekend. You know Dub is just disgusting beyond <laughs> the word disgusting. So we'll see what they got. Um, mm -hmm. They'll bring something to the table. But uh, tonight on Playback, we have – what do we have? Who do we got? Uh, tonight on Playback, we got the Sacramento Kings and the Miami Heat. Uh, Big Ox will be up there with none other than Haley, and they'll be doing that game. We'll see how, how the Kings do. We'll see how Keegan Murray does. We'll see how De'Aaron Fox does, and we'll see if the Heat continue to uh, plummet. Also, me and JD will be doing a watch party right after that. We'll go through all the games, skip from game to game, see what's going on, break down what's going on throughout the whole night. Y'all be sure to pull up, support on Playback. If you haven't yet, go to the uh, Player's Choice site on Playback and follow us. Um, but getting back to the Super Chats, Almighty Lambo said Jalen Duran can't score. 
Did you not see what he just did to the defensive player of the year candidate, Chet, just a week ago? 20 and 20 on him. Put 20 and 20 on him. Yes, he did. Destroyed him on the backboard. Destroyed him in the post. Yes, he did. Uh, James Floyd. Wiseman would do the same thing. I'm not necessarily asking this because of skin tone or anything. I'm just asking because you are rarely up here. So I want to ask you more questions than most people. Um, Indoor Voices said top five white three-point shooters in history. Also because you can shoot the best up here. That's what it is, Chad. He's the best shooter. So mm. That's, that's five. Five. Top five? Top five? Um, I don't know. Um, shoot. Who's the best tone? The best, the, the, the best three points, the best white three point shooter ever. I, I've Steph, never Steph Curry. Steph yeah. Curry, Clay yeah. Thompson. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so so Steph Curry. Uh, we're drafting. We're drafting Ray Allen. We're doing like a Dave Chappelle show draft. Uh, Kyle Korver, mm-hmm. um, Drazen Petrovic. Uh, Jeez, I don't. I have no idea, dude. I've never. I've never. That's a oh, list I've oh, never made. Oh, JJ so, Reddick, Kyle oh, Kulver, Steve yeah, yeah, Nash, Mark JJ Price, Reddick, Larry Bird. That's, 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 those people that you just said, Miles. That's who I was about to say. Oh, Larry Bird. Oh, oh, yeah, Larry Bird. Larry Bird. I was about to put Chris Mullen in there. I was. I forgot Chris Mullen. Yeah, when they say white, do they mean white American or white European? Like, I mean, like, like Slovenian. Like, when it comes, when it comes to, when it comes to basketball, can you define white for me? I, really I think they're just talking about white American. I think they're just talking about white American. When I was in Alabama, listen, does Steve National apply? Because he's tell everybody this story. When I was in Alabama, Steve, I wasn't allowed Steve to go with my my white teammates. I wasn't allowed to go with my black teammates. I had to go hang out with my with 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 my Mexicans. So I'm just asking. <laughs> make that definition. When, when they say when they say that, because if not, then they'll add, they'll they'll put euros in there or international. Yeah, include, yeah, if you, yeah. Oh, just, just American I, I white. Steve Nash. Steve Nash. Steve Nash. Nash, 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 Nash JJ Reddick. Steve, Steve Nash, by the way, isn't even American, right? FYI, Steve, Steve Nash is not Canadian. I know that we've claimed him, but he was he was born in South Africa. Yeah, but, he's South Africa. You know, don't let facts fool you. That makes sense. I wonder why he just makes sense. Back to back MVPs. Boy, got a little melanin in him. So, so is Steve, uh, I was about to ask. So I was about to ask. Is Steve Nash one of us? <laughs> No, I don't think you want to. I don't think you want to go that far. I don't think you want to go that far. I don't know because 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 what's her name? Shalice Theron. She's African American. Actually, this is this is gonna this is going to really upset Dr. Umar. But if you trace all of our all of us back, we all started in Africa. So technically, technically, we all are. So. Like I, I said, she's she had a little extra. Uh, there on, she's from South Africa, which would make her she is from South Africa, she's, and, right. and she's an American citizen, which would make her African American. An American, yeah, definitely, but she's still white though. Okay, I, I just want to make sure. Race, race wasn't even a thing, uh, like until like pretty recent, like six hundred years ago. It was not we? It was the human race. Let's just say it. We all st- we all know where we all started. You know hashtag, what? Hashtag Jesus is black. Yes, go ahead. Yo, Ox, you remember that? When Steve no. Nash had his bet, his bet. No, I don't remember. Yeah, his he's baby. Huh? There you go. It might have been because no, I don't remember. It. It oh, maybe it, yeah, maybe, maybe it was his. Yeah, no, maybe no, it was his. No, I do not remember. Maybe it was his. I'm not getting involved with you. That makes a lot of sense. Purple political breakdown. Sit through a super chat and said, Y'all don't see the irony that people are saying the same stuff about this generation? Sam Wilt is looking for clout is lazy because people say Kobe will score 100 and Jordan would lead the league in scoring his rookie year. I see any irony right here? Saying, saying Wilt was doing it for clout is 100% accurate. It's not lazy. It's factual. Just like you got guys on here, guys on X players. I, I use Gilbert Reason as the perfect example who talks smack. What's his name? Rashard McCants. You know nothing he says he believes. He's just saying that to get views and clicks stop it that's what people have always done it's nothing new you're not original i know y'all think you're original because you're 12 and 15 years old you're not it's been done before just in a different way how how do we know when someone's telling the truth and when they're just looking for clicks i think mccants actually believes the stuff that he says is it it just when we disagree with them they're looking for clicks or is it when they say something so outlandish or is it i I think if i think if it's factual i think if it's like you can prove it with facts then then you're okay everything else is opinion Everything yeah, opinion, else, opinion doesn't mean you're only saying it for clout. If you're saying something that's crazy out there, I think you're saying it for clicks. Like, so, like, Wilk didn't score 100 points. No, no, I think that's factual. Or, 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 clear, or, saying, or saying SGA is better than the was fixed. 
<laughs> so when so when Bill, so when Bill Russell said in I can convince Bob, hold on, I can convince Bob that he, might, he didn't score 100. It's oh, on tape. No, you, you, you know what? Maybe he only did score 94. You said it. You said it. So, yeah, no, but, but what Carmelo, what Carmelo Anthony's seen the footage, though. Carmelo Anthony's yeah, Carmelo. Right. There you go. Carmelo Anthony saying that is a load of sh- pardon, is a load of crap because you know there's no footage. There no, was, but he knows someone who was at the game, so he's seen the footage that like, you haven't cool. seen. That's so, if he knows someone who was at the game, that person was either 10 years old and doesn't remember, or two was 20 and now they're dead. So, oh, you hate Carmelo that much, man. Nah, no, Carmelo, I believe if Carmelo lie. said he's seen the footage, he's seen the he footage. footage. She said he saw footage. That's a lie. That's for clicks, right? That's a lie. That's how you I know. Haven't seen any, I haven't seen any footage of the game. There is I've no heard footage. audio. I've heard yeah, audio you, of you it. You, you, you ain't got motion like have, Carmelo. If Carmelo says, "Give me that 100 point footage," they gonna find it. It's Carmelo. Like he needs to. Yeah, see yeah. It. there's there's no there was no video camera there. There was no photographer there. They had to go tell a guy at halftime, "Hey, go get your camera from the car." And all he took was a picture of him holding up a sign that said 100. Not one picture of him scoring a basket. Therefore, no footage. None. Zero. Sorry, Carmelo. You you're a liar. The footage that Carmelo seen. Yeah. yeah, except for Carmelo, who saw who. Let me ask you: When you're 10 years old watching the game, because that's the person he would have known would have had to have been 10. You remember how many points someone scored? Like you counted, you know for a fact. Go to a game, you know exactly how many points someone scored if it wasn't up on the board and you looked. Come on, stop. I can't even keep track of how many people, how many points people score when I'm watching the game. Just on it, exactly, ex- exactly, exactly. And it's, I like it that way. I, I like it that it's way. Sad I don't, that he's I don't lying. Like- it's a sad that Melo. It's sad that Melo needs to lie. It's a sad that his butt is hurt because Jokic took his number and is going to get his number retired in Denver and not him. I get it. He's upset. No need to lie. No need to lie. Uh, shout out to Melo for standing on business and yeah. actually standing telling on the truth. lies. Standing on we, lies. The, the, the real people appreciate you, Melo. Um, Hakeem Delph actually had a follow up question for this. He said, "Is there actual video on YouTube?" No, there was no video. Carmelo Carmelo hasn't uploaded it yet, but he'll upload this year. There was no, there was no, there was no camera there. There was no camera there. So anyone who says there, there's, it didn't exist. The NBA, no one had a camera. Don't forget, it wasn't on your phone. It was about this big, and no one was carrying that around. It didn't happen. There was no camera. He did it. Hell, I was at Kobe's eighty-one point game, and if it wasn't for the scoreboard, I didn't know. I couldn't have told you how many points he scored. Now we can go back and watch every bucket. That's this why man, we know. Fact. This man hate Carmelo so much, bro. Y'all, no, I hate man. lies. I hate lies, Ticket. I hate lies. So what he did has, he really did see? He has no footage. I will give Carmelo Anthony a million, ten million dollars. Not that he needs it if he can show me footage. But if he can't show me footage, I want twenty million. But you don't think there's any footage of that game? I know for a fact there's no footage. I know for a fact. If that oh, was footage of the game, it would have been released. Now. It's been sixty-two years. Car- Carmelo is a super rich dude. I'll put up ten million to your twenty million if you have footage. Go oh, anytime. Bro. Bring it. Bring it. Y'all hate what? a man so y'all hate a man so much, bro. I don't man, hate. I hate lies. No, Take you it. hate. No, 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 no. You hate Carmelo. I don't that's, hate Carmelo. I don't hate Carmelo. I don't you hate. Always Carmelo. hated Carmelo. You hated what? everything no. about his game. You hate everything about him. No, he's a phenomenal one-on-one scorer. Phenomenal. Yeah, but you just ain't got to praise Vince Carter. Man, yo, you, you're so corrupt. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead, bro. Go ahead, keep capping, man. <laughs> Almighty Lambo said Scoot Henderson had multiple offseason injuries and has shown flashes, which is what we look for in young players. Y'all are being nasty. Right. We're not looking for no flashes. Tickets the only one saying he's about He's he's hey, listen, I show I'll show you a ton, I'll show you a hundred players who had flashes. You want me to show you a list of guys who scored 50 points in this league and amounted to nothing? Yeah, I'd like to see that, Tom. It happens. You want? You, you know my friend did it. You know my friend did it. You know my friend did it. I, I do know your friend did it. That's true. <laughs> he dropped 50 and played on 10 different teams in 10 years. And I love him, but he's not the guy. Shout out to Fluence Friend and his $10 million to Melo's 20. Melo. Melo. Don't hide the 20 million just like you hide in the film. Yeah, I don't um, take check either. Pimp named Slickback said, TBF, folks, we are saying Brandon Randon, B. Randon Miller was a bust before. <laughs> we are saying B. Randon Miller was a bust before the draft. Got to keep it consistent. Also, ticket rank school Henderson, Frank Nilakita, and THT. Start bench cut ticket. Who you got? Um, I'm going to start Horton Tucker. Bench Frank. 
and cut school. If you go back to that draft episode we did, by the way, I did have Miller being better than Scoot. I, I guarantee you that's going to be true in, in three, four years. Oh, yeah, I, 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 I was wrong. Yeah. Can you say that one more time? Can you say that one more time? I, I was for sure wrong about Brandon. And I was. You was right about Brandon Miller. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I was like the main one pushing Scoot over Brandon Miller. For the Someone clip yeah. that, please. <laughs> but, Yo, uh, hey, the, what they, uh, excuse me, the Hornets never got credit, though, Mars. They brought him along the right way. They what's the right him, way, Ticket? What's, no, what's, what's the right way? Losing, no, I'm saying, even though they're losing games, they didn't just throw him out there in the starting lineup and say, we're going to give you the ball every time, do whatever you want to do. They did him and LaMelo. I think they both brought them in the right way. How they eased the men off the bench, like, and made them kind of earn minutes and earn their spot. Remember, they did that with LaMelo Ball, too, and LaMelo ended up being an all star. Mm -hmm. And LaMelo would have made the all star team this year if he didn't get hurt. Do you think, do you think Scoot would have been better if they kept, if they kept, um, Dame and let him just sit and watch for a bit? No, he wouldn't have played. No, no, but I know he wouldn't have played, but what, better long term. Bench. Yeah, better long term. I think the only I think the best way to learn is through experience. I think him playing is the best thing for him. Uh, Majestic sent through a super chat and said, "I ain't buying no merch till I see Ox with a PC hoodie." Ron L host. Facts. Um, Where my merch at? Where? where <laughs> I'm giving my address. I'm giving my address. Hey, drink up. My door at yo. <laughs> I'm giving my Ron, address. Up, I'm, I'm my address you? Five times. I still got nothing. Facts. I wear a hoodie every show. Every, I'm I keep hearing, I, oh, is it, I need, is this the right address? We want to update your address. What you want my address for? Where, where my hoodie at? Facts. Facts. Send me my, matter of fact, send me my address back. Send me my address back. <laughs> <laughs> send me my address back. You don't need it. All those going over UPS nowadays. I don't know. They, they trip. <laughs> Next time I'm going to have to use USPS or, oh, just no. so you know, Ron, at least just so they don't ship to Canada. I, I'll buy that. I'll buy it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on, man. They they, they tripping. They 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 talking about they ran out of gas. They talking about they got a flat tire. They talking about it's the holiday. I don't, I don't know what's going on. I don't know. But fluent. Um, before you have to leave, uh, yes, I just want to ask you. Um, I need a prediction from each team who you could see winning the MVP of this game if their team wins on each right. side. So, so I'll I'll say a little bit to what Bob said. Um, the sophomores, if this was a real game, they're they're winning. However, what's going to happen is the rookies are going to win this game. Uh, this is going to be the NBA's, not scripted at all, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, Victor's coming out party. You're going to see him shooting threes, crossing people up, dunking, put back dunks. You're going to see Hawkins and um, uh, uh, my boy B-Pod jacking up threes, and he's just going to be put back. I think Wemby goes for like 35 like four blocks. Um, this is going to be his coming up party. That's your MVP rookies win. You think Wemby's going to block shots? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. He's going to be blocking threes, and people oh, will be like, yeah, that's, ooh, yeah, that's ah, awesome. ooh, ah, yeah. All right, hey, Wemby. We're gonna catch up with you soon. All right, bro. Tony Tone, be right, easy. Go right. get that merch. Thursday, 7 yes, p.m. Sir. You chill. Yes, sir. You know what time it is. Later, y'all. Uh, back to this roster, though. I do want to ask you guys. Um, we had some discrepancies, and we had some things we didn't necessarily like. I know Mar said he wanted the Thompson Twins on there. Who? Uh, and I want to ask everybody: Who on the rookies and who on the sophomores is being snubbed right now, or who's being uh, wrongly placed on these rosters? Only one chill. The only one I can think about is on the rookies. I think that the I think a, a man Thompson should definitely be on that rookie squad. No doubt about it. Um and a sore Thompson, he should be on the problem that we having with a sore was how Monty Williams one minute he was starting and the next minute he was in and out the lineup. But for the most part, I think that he's definitely one of the best 15 rookies or one of the best 12 rookies in the game today. Both of those guys. So I'm surprised that they didn't make the squad. Of this of the sophomores, I think they got that right. There's a couple of G League guys too that are going to be playing in this game. I think it's like four G League guys that are also going to be playing in the game. So that that's going to balance out the sophomore roster. 
And these are the G League guys at the bottom. You can see yeah. uh, Mac McClung is going to be on there, Tyler Smith, and Oscar Schwebe. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I and I don't know how they're going to balance this out. These are just all the guys. Yeah. Um. You guys know who Oladonis Williams is? Heard of him? Uh, nah. Well, they, couldn't, get, they couldn't. They couldn't get Amani Bates in from the G League. <laughs> <laughs> Oscar Schwebe is wild to me, the, the fact that he can't stick in the NBA because, I mean, it's the college player of the year. He didn't get drafted. That's nuts. But the game has not, changed so much. He's not, he's not very skilled and he's an under yeah, that, I, I guess that's where Yeah, I guess that's where the discrepancy is now in the, in the NBA. Like, you have to be able to – so I, I guess it's fair to say this guys like Ben Wallace, like would Ben Wallace be able to play today as good as he is as a defender? Would he be able to play today offensively? Yeah, but he'd probably Jaylen be on. If Jalen Durant can play, Ben can play. Um, from what I know, Oscar he was older in college anyway. Like yeah. he was, so that's part of it too. Mm -hmm. He was. You're not going to draft someone who's what twenty three in college, especially when they don't really have. That's I don't want to say a skill set, but. You're an undersized big without much skill. Is in today's league, you're probably not going to get drafted. Which is, he can probably find a job in the league, and I think Ben Wallace would obviously be in the league. But I wouldn't be surprised if Ben Wallace was a second round pick. Hmm. All right, y'all, back to the supers. Uh, pimp named Slickback said it's weird to me though why fans of the NBA spend so much time trashing on futures and past generations. I've yet to hear someone say Hank Aaron or Joe Montana played against plumbers. Me neither. I have not heard that. Mm -mm. I, I just think know. you don't know who, who is Hank Aaron. I don't know. Who yeah, he, was, he was the home run leader before Barry Bonds broke his record. He was the home run leader. He had broke Babe Ruth's home run record. And then Barry Bonds oh. broke his record. Um, I just think that it's I think the emergence of social media and the fact that these guys who played in the past, they're living during this time and they hear all the chatter about how their era is whack, how they these the great players didn't play against great players. And they feel like that they need to defend themselves that, yo, my era was awesome. I don't think that this is something that was going on back in the 80s in the 70s and 80s as much because social media wasn't around. So we didn't hear that much chatter. I was 15 years old. I wish you would have told me that Dominique Wilkins wasn't better than Elgin Baylor. I was like, get the hell out of here. I was, of course, until I did homework on Elgin Baylor and found out who he actually was. And I was like, wait a minute, Elgin Baylor was awesome. But I didn't know that when I was 15. I didn't know that when I was 18 until I went back and actually did homework on him and found out how awesome he was. So if you had this era of people, you have these era of young people that's talking about how awesome this era is and talking about how bad the '90s is because of the, the the talent. Of course, the people that's still alive that were that lived through it, you're gonna hear them talk more. Mars, I keep telling you, man. Twenty years from now, when you gotta listen to your nephew or your son tell you that Kobe Bryant played against plumbers, you're gonna want to choke the life out of them. Watch, I'm telling okay, you, they wasn't happen. ducking. They wasn't ducking smoke though. Like these dudes is now. They wasn't making excuses, not playing games. They wasn't doing none of that stuff, bro, that they're doing now, man. That's because that was all we had back then. If your game did your your game did all the talking for you. It wasn't social media, it wasn't uh shoe companies, it wasn't none of that. Your game did the talking. So you you for agree you. that did ruin the game then. A lot That's of what that you was going on today. A lot of the new amenities, you know what I'm saying? You agree a lot of the new amenities spoil guys and it ruined the, the I do. The All Star Game is a joke, ticket. You remember the All Star Game was the it was it the All Star Game was Ted was was dead as the best pickup game in the world, mm -hmm. and it wasn't about yo not not being showed up. No, I can't wait to get in the All Star Game to go up against Magic. I can't wait to get in the All Star Game and go up against Drexler. That's what it was about. Today, these guys got other things to protect, so I think they're afraid to actually compete because if they get shown up. Well, that might jeopardize this deal. That might jeopardize my reputation here, and that's what that, that's that that's the effect of social media. Uh, hit the like button if you think um, the last generation was full of plumbers, firemen, and car mechanics, or whatever you what, whatever you think it is. Hit the like button if you think that's the case. Uh, Purple political <laughs> breakdown said, "I'm glad you brought that up, Mars. I just saw the same clip. Will talked about how he could score seventy against the 90s because of how they play defense. And Bill said 
he would have still won 11 chips. With the bomb squad that he had. He also said he doesn't like when people say that about his teams. He says that. No, that was interesting. He was like, he he said he doesn't like when people say um, Bill Russell just had all this immense talent, and then he said um, that the reason his play his teammates look so good is because of him. Basically, that that's pretty much what he said about how he made their jobs easier um, and made their lives so much easier because of everything he did defensively, allowing them to make mistakes, allowing them to get out in transition, run the floor, make scoring easier for them. He spoke about um, Don Nelson and how Don Nelson was basically on his way out of the league before he got with the the Celtics and how Bill Russell made his life easier and made him look like an NBA player. And then Don Nelson goes on to be what a solid a solid player for the Boston Celtics for a decade plus. He said when he was with the Lakers, Don Nelson didn't look like an NBA player. And then after that comes to Boston, he looks great. And that's how um, people seem to view Bill Russell's teammates as Bill Russell benefited from them more than they benefited from him. And he doesn't like that. And I found that very funny. So shout out to Bill Russell, man, standing on business. That's my goat. I'm nice in it, what y'all gave me credit for. That's pretty much what he said. Yeah, that's pretty I'm much nice what y'all gave me credit for. Don't think that it's just because I played with a bunch of ballers that they they're the reason why I was nice. No, I had something to do with it too. Tyrese Miller said Darvin Ham is ter- is a terrible coach. He can't be defended anymore. Rotations are awful. Don't know when to call timeouts. Bullet heads, time is up. Why is he terrible? Because he's coaching LeBron James. Is that why he's terrible? Is he That's terrible? Right. Because so the guy who mm-hmm. right now in Chilltown, in the beginning of his coaching career, he came from an assistant coach winning a championship as an assistant. Mm-hmm. He came to and went to the Western Conference Finals. Yep. Then he won the NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. Right? Now all of a sudden he's a bullet head, blockhead, he don't know how to coach, mm-hmm. all these things. This is the type of stuff I be trying to tell y'all about. Like when we grew up Chilltown, you would never hear guys talking about coaches like this. We always okay. the if he was in, if he was in Minnesota, we wouldn't be having this conversation about that. Right, but chill. We always like that's the thing. When we grew up, we always talked about the players. You never heard guys talking about Pat Riley. You never heard guys talking about Rick really? Adelman not doing what he's supposed to do. You never heard guys talking about Hubie Brown. You never heard guys talking about uh, Mike Fratello. You never heard guys. The biggest rough up you heard with a coach was Freewell and PJ Carlismo. Like that was literally the biggest. Like you never heard stuff about. Uh, who was the Pistons coach? Uh, uh, chill. Chuck um, Daly. Chuck, Chuck Daly. Daly. Yeah, you never like when they were winning championship or when they was just playing. You never heard people say, mm-hmm. "Hey man, Chuck Daly's trash, man. He can't coach, man." Or even go to the mid level coaches. You never heard them saying that about Jeff Van Gundy. Jeff Van Gundy ain't never won no championship. But Darvin Ham, for some reason, he's garbage. Chill town. He's just trash, bro. Because it's not about championships. No, no. I'm saying no, no. I'm talking about just as a coach. I'm saying. You never heard people saying this about any of these other coaches, like coaches that were mediocre as well, who didn't win championships. You never heard them saying that about Don Nelson. He you wasn't never heard mediocre. Him, huh? He wasn't mediocre. He was no, a great I'm coach. Saying, no, no, I'm saying he never won a chip. Yeah, I'm saying we so, so, don't well, criticize Darvin well, Hammond not because he has Darvin Hammond has over fifty percent, one percentage as a head coach. And that's not what I'm saying. Good. It's not about the results. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, okay, people yeah, 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 yeah. yeah people who, who, who are you? Who are you saying never talked about coaches though? Tickler, are you saying players? Or are you talking? No, about as we grew up, Bob, when we grew up, Bob, when we grew up, we never, you never heard guys say, "Hey, man, this coach right here is trash." I'm talking about like when you were younger, Bob, growing up, you never heard dudes criticizing them coaches. You can go to some of the worst coaches in the league. You never heard it say, hey, man, this coach trash. You got to be out. It was well, always, wait a minute, we, we was always well, looking at we, the we, players, we, bro. It, it, even if that's true, we did. We definitely did have some – there was definitely some issues with coaches. I mean, the Orlando Ooh, Magic. You didn't hear nobody saying nothing about George Carl. That's not true. The Orlando that. Magic went to the NBA Finals. They had their coach fired. There was no, a no, 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 no. Yes, not, they did do that. If Twitter existed, you'd hear it. Yes. No, no, no. You hear more social media exists. Players did that. Yeah, that, 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 that that's actually, why yeah, you're here. Chill, chill. No, I'm saying chill. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. I ain't talking about the players. I'm talking about right. like from the outside, from the fans and stuff saying who don't know basketball, who haven't been in between the lines saying dudes mm. is garbage. You understand what I'm saying? Like these dudes are saying, they're out here saying, oh, Doc Rivers is garbage. Doc Rivers is one of the only coaches in NBA history who won a championship. Doc Rivers is one of the only winning coaches. Doc Rivers is, you know, in the top 10 winning coaches in NBA history, only half of them won a championship. I but see, nobody that. tells y'all that Doc Rivers is one of those half. He's right. top seven all-time coaching in the history of this game. People say, oh, why he keep getting jobs? This is his last job. Well, because there's a lot of sorry-ass coaches out here that couldn't win no games that ain't nobody fitting to hire no more. There's a lot of inexperienced coaches that the experienced teams don't want to hire because they're inexperienced. They don't want to take that risk. 
For example, look at y'all coach in Boston, Chill Town. What's going to happen if he don't get it done this year, Chill? He's going to be. I think he's on a hot seat already. But it's what's going to happen if he don't? If he I don't, don't think get to the finals fired. this year, if he don't get to the finals this year, what you think going to happen, Chill? I don't think he's going to get fired. But I should think he be on the hot seat? I, I think that's easy. yes. But you, you figure what kind of team he has, and this isn't like it was, Big Ox. The patience level does not. The patience level is not what it was years ago, where we're building saying, a team. This is a championship should Jason, level should Jason team. I can see. I can see if they. I can see yes. if they. If they if they don't make the playoffs, or if they yes. have a, a a bad first round exit or something like that, even a bad second round exit, I can see that. But as long as they're getting to the Eastern Conference Finals or the Finals, Mars, this team coach, like, who who are you who are you going to hire in this place? That's all I want to know. That's the million dollar question. It, it has it has you have to have somebody that you know is a guaranteed. I mean, who who's out there who can do that? I said that before the season started that if they were five hundred, that that seat that Sam Cassell was sitting in. He could very well be the next head coach of the Boston Celtics. I, yeah. I, I, I said that before the season started, if they weren't very good. But mm -hmm. I think that if they end up in the second round and they end up losing or they end up in the East, East Finals again, yes, Mars, there will be some trade talk at the end of the summer. Because if I'm not mistaken, Jason Tatum's contract is up at the end of this year. So if 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 this doesn't go according to plans, yeah, you could definitely see some movement. And in particular, a guy like involving Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum? Something like I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was something like that. Whether it's Jason Tatum, especially if he, especially if he wasn't very good in the playoffs. Who let's is going to for Jason let, Tatum? Let's just say for the sake of argument that he wasn't very good in the Jamar playoffs. Fox. Right. Let, let, let's just say for the sake of argument that he wasn't very good in the playoffs. You're gonna hear, yo, we got to break this unit up. I'm not in favor of trading Tatum, but I can tell you right now, you're gonna hear chatter. This crew got to get broken up. Uh, yeah, but Drew, by no stretch, yeah. there's, it's not gonna be Tatum. Jason Tatum ain't going nowhere. I don't That's care. Fair. They could, they could, they could lose in the first round. And Jason Tatum is not on the. You can call my phone. Traded. Don't say Jason Tatum's name. That's all. That's all. Brad. That's the only thing Brad Stevens traded. got for y'all. Don't, don't bring him up. He's yeah. not going nowhere. I don't it's care. Some I don't he care what. Traded for though. Who, I don't think. Luka, I, I don't think so. But SGA. I know there's gonna, be, it's gonna be some. It's gonna be some chatter though. It will. That if, if if they were to lose early, it would be some chatter. You got to break this thing up. You have if to you break want, this thing if up. you want Jason Tatum run, you have to give up top five talent. I'm not saying Jason Tatum is the top five. I'm saying you got to give up top seven talent. Nobody's I ain't interested in moving off. Nobody's of nobody's coming off of Giannis. Nobody's coming off of Jokic. Nobody's coming well, Luka, off of Luka. Luka. Um, Curry. Who you talking about for Bobby? Well, hold on. <laughs> that's, that's, that could get interesting. Chet. Hold on, you talking about? I'm talking about, I'm talking about. I'm talking about. I'm talking about for JT. Like first of all, I'm saying the Celtics aren't trading him. But but second of all, if they do trade him, they got they have to trade him for unmovable pieces. Would you do MB? But I don't I don't. I'm I mean, asking you. Would you do MB? Would you do MB for Tatum straight nah, up? I want Jason Tatum. And, and let Jalen Brown want... be the main winger. Listen, I'm gonna put it like this: ticket. MB hmm. wins a championship on that team with with Drew, KP, and JB, Derek White, Yo Joel. Embiid wins I, a championship. I can kind of get behind that, Ron. I can kind of get behind that. Uh, but I, don't, I just don't, uh, know. Let, I don't know. You, let me ask you this question, Ox. Would you do AD in two first-round picks? Nah. Nah. I'm not trading Jason Tatum. I'm no, I'm talking about for, no, I'm talking about for Embiid. AD in two first-round picks for Embiid. Oh. Why are we trading Embiid now? Yeah. Because he's always hurt. <laughs> I'm talking about Jason Tatum, man. You're talking about Boston. You're talking about Jason Tatum. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. Because Boston, is, they're going to be trash either way, Mars. We ain't worried. That's, that's Chill Town's fantasy. Boston ain't going to be trash because they're not trading Jason Tatum. As long as they got JT, they got action. Yo, you, yo, you and Chill going to ride this bandwagon straight to hell. I'm, with the it's, not no, it's, not no, it's not a bandwagon. I'm not saying JT is the best player. I'm talking about when you're a franchise like Boston and you got to Jason Tatum, you don't come off of that. Like, you, you, that's whoever does it, Brad Stevens. You're out of there, buddy. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, trade, trade Jason Tatum if you want to. And then and then and then lose one more game the next year than you did the first game, and you're gone. World Peace with the super chat. Uh, World Peace said, Do you think if McGrady and Yao Ming was healthy in the 09 series against the Lakers, could they have won a chip that year? And do y'all think the 09 Rockets was a super team? Uh Ox, I gotta ask you this. I, I can get behind that. That was a seven game series, right? Seven games they lost in Mars. So, do they beat? Do they? I mean, do they beat uh, Orlando? 
I mean, T Mac provides probably yeah. the same matchup problems. Yeah. Not as good as Kobe, but similar matchup problems. Um, but no, it's not. Su- I don't think it's a super team. Oh, why would they be a super team? I don't think they're a super team, but I do think they were a really good team. And also, too, I want to say that this team in today's era with uh, with Shane Battier and Meta World Peace being able to play the four, both being very good wing defenders and both being able – basically just elite 3 and D guys in today's era, I think this team would be crazy right now. But they had a mid-coach, Rick Adelman, man. Rick, mid-coach, mid, mid-coach. That's, that's the problem. No championships. Wait, wait, wait what? No championships, <laughs> mid coach. That's what I just heard. Who's Fantastic. a mid coach? Hey, does he have a championship? Okay. Don't do this, Mars. Mid coach. Do this, Mars. Rick, Adam, Rick Adamant is that guy. We're, we're worse than Doc Rivers, mid coach. Why is he worse than Doc? No championship. Are you tr- you're tro- oh, you're trolling. Okay. I'm just going based on what I heard. Um, I wasn't between the lines. You know what I'm saying? So, um, no, Rick, yeah, Rick Adam is not mid. I don't care how many championships he doesn't have. Mm. I'm looking at this roster too. They had a they had a couple young pieces. Like if everybody wasn't, you know, they had some guys that were young and they had some guys that were older. Had some of these guys been closer to their prime, this really would have been a tough team. Uh, obviously, yeah, when T Mac were hurt, and they, they were never really excuses, healthy, man. Bro, but always excuses, man. They had they had the Kim Mutombo. He was he was in his seventeenth year. They had a young. Kyle <laughs> Yo, Ron, Why did you Ron, bring Ron, him up? Ron, you were <laughs> I'm you saying, saying that in had to be I'm, 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 I'm saying that to say, like, <laughs> if these guys was in their prime, like, that, yeah. this would have been a, you know, this would have been a fire ass team. Y'all respect yourself, Ron saying, bro. T man. So, so <laughs> it's just too many excuses, bro. Too many excuses. Ticket, ticket. I'm not making no excuses. They was the, they was hurt. They never won anything. And that was that. I'm just merely just. They was hurt. Oh, so, T Mac did I'm, just, I'm okay. just bringing up the roster. I just thought okay. they had a dope ass roster. That's all okay. I'm saying. <laughs> and that's really all I'm saying. They had Kyle Lowry. He was in his second year. Shout out Luis Scola. This, this was one of my on. favorites. Does, does Joel Embiid get a pass for all these years for being hurt every year in the playoff and losing? Well, the the the, the same thing about Joel and, and T Mac is that to deal with that bum doc. So what, no, 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 what, no, no. Doc? Ain't, ain't, no, 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 no. Because Joel Embiid was losing with other coaches. He was losing with Brett Brown too. I'm just playing. I don't feel. I don't feel that way. I don't feel that way about Doc. I just no, no. So hold on. Hold on. So here's my thing, right? Here's my thing, right? That's my that's my point, right? So and and, and 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 again, Bob, like I said, does does Joel and B get a, get a pass from y'all for being hurt? Chill town, Mars. What's up with you and Joel and B? I don't. Mars, I don't know. Really I, I, I was just I, talking about. I, I just. I like just. Don't, I just don't get the obsession with trying to give people. It's not about giving someone a pass. It's about acknowledging they were hurt. That that's it. That's not about here's a pass for being hurt. No, it's not that. It's they were hurt. They lost. He was hurt. Move on. It's not about oh, does that mean the loss doesn't count? No, the loss counts. They lost. Move on. But he was hurt. Both things are true. It's not about giving someone a pass. Saying why something happens doesn't mean you're excusing it. Embiid, we would like Embiid to be healthy. We would have liked T Mac to be healthy. We would have liked Brandon Roy and Greg Oden to be healthy with that Trailblazers team. But they were hurt. That's the fact of the matter. It's not about giving them a pass for it. But that's what happened. They were hurt. It's that simple. They were hurt. No pass. No excuse. But they were hurt. So the same applies to Giannis when he played Miami that year. Yes, he was ankle. hurt. It doesn't excuse the Bucks losing. No, I ain't, talking about, ex- I ain't talking about this past year. I'm talking about the year you hurt his ankle. What year did he hurt his ankle? Remember the first time they played Miami? They was early in the playoffs. They played Miami. Yeah, yeah. They Giannis was hurt. I, I say that all the time. Giannis was I was hurt. in the bubble. That was in the yeah, bubble. Yeah, I say I literally say that all the time. Giannis was hurt. That doesn't excuse the fact that they lost. They were down 3-0 in that series. Giannis got hurt in game three. Clearly wasn't Yanis, but they still lost. Both things mm-hmm. are true. Yanis was hurt. The he, the Bucks lost. Both of them are true. That's it. One thing doesn't need to be true for the other one to be false. They're both true. Yanis was hurt and the Bucks lost. So in a microscope, how do y'all see? How do y'all look at a guy like Joel Embiid's career if he's always hurt in the playoffs? Disappointing. He's always... More than anything. Disappointing. More than anything. What could yes. have been? Definitely more That's than it. anything. Disappointing. I, I think it's tragic. I so think it's MVP, you got so, you got so you got you got to think of how his career would be how his career yes, would be. Yes, he deserved the regular him. season MVP. Yes, he deserves. Oh, so, so, so y'all man. saying he deserves it this year over Shea? He's not going to play sixty five games, so he's not going to win. Shea's not getting it. And Shea's, no, and, Shea, and Shea's not even the one seed anymore, so that argument's dead. Yeah, but he's still hold on. That team he has for him to even be the two seed is amazing. He's not the two seed. He's a three seed. Well, he'll be he'll be up there after they win tonight. I don't think they beat. Or them. they won't be because Denver's gonna beat the Portland Trailblazers. 
No, Denver's playing who? No, 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 no. no. Denver play OKC okay, tonight. Denver play OKC. Oh, okay, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. That's hell, that's no. hell no, hell, hell no, hell no. Okay. Hell no. Yeah. Oh, wait, so, so, so skinny man check, checking your kitchen? Yes. That's what's mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm. Come on, let's cut it out. On. You you was in here glazed in chess defense early. I do. Out. I do. I think Chet's a hell of a defender, not defending Jokic. <laughs> I think it's incredible how I think it's incredible how these dudes are awesome, but then now it gets disregarded because that's what we used to. So a guy like Giannis, who should very well should very much be in the league MVP conversation, like we scoff at 31 and 11 and six, like it's nothing because that team is so bad defensively. And if they were better defensively, we'd be talking about Giannis as the defensive player of the year. Because I think the Giannis is one of the best defensive players in the game. But because they're not good as a whole defensively, that gets thrown by the wayside. But when you talk about him in terms of his value to the Milwaukee Bucks, I think they're at the bottom of the Eastern Conference if Giannis wasn't on that team. Now, when you talk about Joker, we're talking about we're talking about Joker who I said this to you earlier, Mars and Bob. I said this to you about if you look at over the years, the two things, um, one of the things was value over replacement player. When you talk about stats, the, guy, the, the guys that are in, I think they're in the top three. Those are the guys that are going to be the league MVP. This was over, I, I believe I I believe I went back 30 years. These are the guys that are going to be league MVP. And Joker is at the top of that list. And a 26, 12, and 9 guy on a team that's at the top of the Western Conference, considering what Shea is doing, I'm not fighting that considering what Shea is doing. But when I think about what Joker is doing as a whole for that unit, what Joker is doing for a whole as that unit, is he more valuable than anybody else in the league? Man, it's hard for me to, it's, with the exception of Giannis, it's, 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 it's hard for me to, to say that he's not. Hmm. All right, fellas. Go ahead, go ahead, uh, we, we got another super chat from Tyrese Miller. Tyrese Miller said, all those coaches are better than him. You can't be using a two-year sample size compared to other coaches, OG. Ticket. What do you mean? And if that's, how, and how hold hold on, ticket. So, so if that's true, how about we how about we let him <clears throat> figure it out? Because those other right. guys had an opportunity to figure it out. You want to fire him after one year? Okay, sure, he is figuring it out. But those other coaches, Don Nelson, uh, Doc Rivers, all of them dudes had time to figure it out. They had years. In Los Angeles, even though LeBron James, I don't think he's gonna be there that much longer. At least he had time to figure this out. At least, at least them they think everybody's supposed to be Phil Jackson. And Phil Jackson, right now, did Adrian Griffin get the championship his first year? Chill Town. Did Adrian Griffin get the championship his first year? Did Adrian Griffin get time to figure out? No, he didn't. But he, but Adrian Griffin's situation was different, bro. You, you gotta know what's going on with Adrian Griffin. His situation was unbelievable. If you well, knew the, the players, truth, the, the players don't seem to like Darvin Ham either. Moss, no, to be no, honest no, with no, you. no, it's not about that. No, 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 it's about the other stuff. I ain't talking about the players with Adrian Griffin. <laughs> Adrian Griffin had Adrian Griffin had insubordination problems on his staff. He had guys on his staff that he, he didn't hire his staff. And that's the bad thing about being a head coach. When you don't hire your staff, bro, yeah, you don't trust nobody because everybody's trying to cut you down. So the fact that he didn't hire his staff, you saw from day one what happened with Terry Stotts. Terry Stott wasn't feeling what was going on. When he walked out the door, I knew it was going to be problems. When you quit as an assistant coach and you get into a beef with a head coach on the fr- and training camp, we ain't in regular season, Joe Town. Training camp, you walk out that door, that speaks values, bro. Now, all the other assistant coaches, you know what they're gonna do, Mars? They're gonna pick a side, and guess what side they're gonna be on? Ambition because they're looking at you like you food. So, he had a bunch of coaches that's reporting and telling the ownership he ain't doing this right, he ain't doing that right. Mars, the last thing I want on my coaching staff is a dude who wants my job. Right. I don't want that because right. how can I really focus if this dude is next in line to take my job? And I don't even know him like that. It's different where Doc Rivers was grooming Ty Lue <clears throat> to become a head coach. He was grooming him. When, when Ty Lue was on his bench, he was grooming Ty Lue to become a head coach. Meanwhile, Mars is on. I'm on Mars's bench, and I'm sitting behind Mars, and I'm quietly, yo, this dude don't know what he's doing, y'all, because I want your job. I'm trying to get you up out of there. And that resonates with the players. That's what ultimately leads to a mutiny. Yo, 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 chill. We're going to get this dude Mars up out of here. We're going to get you in here. That's ultimately what happens. I don't want that on my bench. No. Mm, but every co- every coach like that almost got fired, fired, Chill Town. If you look, they were going to do, uh, what's the coach? The uh, coaching the Suns right now, uh, Bob? Uh, Frank Vogel. 
Frank Vogel, they were going to do Frank Vogel like that. They, he didn't hire his staff. They hired Jay Kidd and those guys. If Frank, if Frank Vogel, they, they were going to put Jay Kidd as the head coach until he left. He got tired of waiting. They, won, they messed up and won the chip. So that's what hurt that from happening. Then you look at the coach that LeBron had over in Cleveland, um, David Black. He didn't hire that staff. He didn't hire Tyron Lue. They made Tyron Lue the highest paid assistant coach in the NBA. Go look at any other coach that didn't hire his staff. He got fired. If he didn't get it done, he got fired. Did Darvin Ham hire his staff? Yeah. Every, all of them except for what you call it. Except for, uh, well, he did hire him too. Uh, but no, he didn't. All of them except for Phil Handy. Okay. Phil Handy was kept over. He kept Phil Handy over. He's the only one I know on the staff and um, Damari Cairo. That's it. Yeah. That's the rest of them got the rest of those guys are new are Darvin Ham guys. They're new guys. So Chris mm-hmm. Jen. Okay. Chris Jen Asad, is Asad R said, Mars, you don't think it's funny how football, soccer is one of the is is the one sport where players aren't more skilled but more athletic. Also, did you get to see GCSEs? GCSEs? GCSEs are the equivalent of SATs. Mm. And I'm too young to have done my GCSEs. Um, I, no, I think football players are more skilled. I just think coaching means players play more of an system, so you don't see players um, express themselves like they did in the past. Because back then, you won games on individual brilliance, so you you believe the players are more skilled. Players today can do, like the best players today can do just as much, if not more. But they just don't get asked to do that because coaches want players to play within a system and play their style of play so you don't see the individual brilliance win games it's more so playing within the scheme and that's Bro, how you're you, so. you lucky i gotta go you 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 you're a slick punk you don't never want to bring up them punk lakers while i'm in here you won't wait till i'm gone to cook them sorry ass lakers getting their <laughs> ass kicked like they did last night they got the hell beat out of them last night and i ain't get to cook on them but that's okay Ron. Oh, 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 oh before you go before you go ticket cook on them how about that before they you trash, go, ticket, man, bro, cook on them, ticket. Boy, this is a crisis of leadership. Because and I want to make boy, sure that I'm clear. I don't even not, watch the Lakers like that. Your I boy don't. is not a leader. That was disgusting. The players have quit on this dude. The team has quit on him because they all know they're going to get traded or they all know their names and trade rumors. Uh, dudes got pumped by Dillon Brooks. Nobody wants to stand up to these guys. Then you get pumped by the Atlanta Hawks. You get blown out by the Atlanta Hawks, one of the worst teams in the NBA this year. Yeah, It's over with for the Lakers. Chill time and not making the playoffs and go ahead. Now, let me ask you this question, Ticket. Now, this time last year, okay, we're in – it is January of 2023. Where were the Lakers this time last year? Were they in a better position or were they in a worse position than they were last year? Um, I think this year they're in a worse position because I don't think teams are as obliged to work with them now. I think teams are tired of bailing them out. I I Ticket, so you saying the Lakers are going to win less games than the Kings this year? Yeah, I, I, Bob, I might have to send you that bread because these dudes are horrible. Uh-oh. Yeah, Ticket, you got to see. You got to send us hey, bread because remember we made that thousand dollar bet on the Bronx, Kings. Right? Hey, hey, but, but hold on, but hold on, <laughs> chill, t- hey, chill town. Don't don't uh oh just yet because it don't look like the Warriors getting in them playoffs. It's not because I, I might have to come off some bread too. <laughs> it's looking <laughs> tricky for me right now. Hey, we're I was going like, like I said, I was going to use that dough for a suit. I might, I'm, I, that's something different now. <laughs> it, 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 it's definitely something different now. So, man, it's looking tricky. All right, y'all. We got a couple, a couple more super chats, and then I got some fun things for us to do today. It's it's a Wednesday. It's Hump Day. Let's you know. Let's let's let's, let's make it something. Uh, we Book pizza said, party, Ron? "What? We having a pizza party? Nah, ice cream party." Damo, what it do? What it do? What up? What up? Damo. So what you gonna do when y'all don't make the playoffs? What? <laughs> what? What? What are we talking? Are you Who, the Yankees? Are you gonna, are you, what are we talking about? <laughs> are you the Los rip Angeles that Lakers. Back down? That that po- that crown right there behind you, over your right shoulder. Are you gonna rip that off off the wall? Yeah, Why yeah. would I do that to my glorious king? What are we talking about? Uh, uh, what? Hey, Damo, I want to make a bet with you. I don't want to make a bet with you. Think about it is, I just don't know what the bet is just yet. But <laughs> when we decide what the bet's going to be, I want you to take that LeBron poster off, and I want you to put a poster of Darvin Ham with a crown on his head <laughs> right there. We'll figure uh, something out. Yeah. We'll figure something out. All right. Hey Damo, uh, look, Damo, Damo, because I got I got a couple of friends that's they're, they're pretty decent artists, right? If I get one of them to paint a Darvin Ham 
crown with a crown on his head. Can I can I send it to you? Will you, will you hang it? What happened today that made y'all want to test me <laughs> like this? Like I don't. <laughs> Did I miss something? Real question, bro. It's, like, a gift. it's a gift from a friend to a friend. We what? co-workers. Domo, I'm trying to give you a gift for your background. You want to put it up? That's crazy. If I lose a bet, sure, Ox. I'll put I, I, I'll put the picture of Ham up on my wall. Man. <laughs> All right, couple super chats, and then we're gonna dive into uh what happened last night into the NBA. And then we haven't done a draft in a long time, so this is a good time to go ahead and do a sneaky little draft. Just a sneaky one. But Book said, is it me or was that Kaminga dive kind of dirty? He didn't have to dive, but causing an injury just makes it worse. Not saying it was intentionally done to hurt him, but just a bad look. I don't, I don't know. Because, you know, at the it's, you got to watch the beginning of the play. So one thing when, when we was young, Hooper, my mom used to always tell us, like, if you're going to go get the ball, you got to get on the ground for the ball. You can't. You can't just bend over and reach because that's people are diving to go get your knees. That's not how he got hurt right there. But at the beginning of the play, Joel could have already had the ball if he just would have went and got it. Joel, he's just big. He be falling. I think Kaminga was just trying to hustle. I, I I hate to say that I like the play because the way it resulted, but I like the hustle from the young fella. He's going after the ball. I'm not mad at that. I'm, I'm really not. I don't, and Obviously, I don't think there was any malicious intent anyway. But I mean, you got to get on the ground, bro. That's that's how we that's how we're taught. You know, that's why we that's why we do that drill when coach roll the ball out and we got to go get that's on the cool. ground and get it and get up and come play one on one this way. That's why we're taught to get on the ground. So, I mean, shit, it was a good play in my in my eyes. Damo just bounced yesterday too. By the way, I'm talking and next thing I know, he's gone. I'm like, yeah, that was know? crazy. Yeah, that what was happened? crazy. Well, I'm, I'm talking to Damo. Next thing I know, it's just like gone. It's like I got my, my back bad. My bad. It was gone. It's like what the hell? <laughs> my bad. My bad. I thought you was engaged in a chat again. I had to run downstairs to deal with my daughter, he, he and then I got caught up. Or nothing. <laughs> just I gone. thought I was coming back. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I was about to run down, come right back, and be good. Right. Went down there. Coco Miller turned to Blues Clues. Blues <laughs> Clues turned into a book. A yeah, book turned into like to a bath. Bath turned to bedtime. I'm like, well, mm -hmm. no more playback. Yeah. All right, uh, next super chat from Napoleon Ice Cream. I told you we was going to have an ice cream party, Ox. Uh, he right. said, who should win most improved player this year, Maxi or Sangoon? Let's hurry up and get this out before Mars comes here. Let's all, let's all make the proper pick. Uh, Kobe White, that's who should win it. King of Murray, definitely. Colin Sexton. But between those two guys, uh, I said this to, I said this to uh, Damo yesterday. If you look at if you look at the previous most improved players, the majority of them, their scoring average went up six points minimum. So Tyrese Maxey, what is he? What is he? Twenty six a game this year, something like that. I think I, I think he's like twenty six a game. But I think Singoon was like uh, like sixteen last year, and that's up to like twenty two or twenty three this year. So it may be Singoon this year between the two of those guys. Jalen Johnson, and I do want to say that him and Trey Young. Have one of the best. I don't. I haven't done the list. They have one of the best pick and rolls in the NBA, mm -hmm. and it's behind a couple things. Obviously, Trey Young's one of the best playmakers and facilitators, but Jalen Johnson dunks everything. Everything. He can also pick and pop. Also, out of that pick and roll, he can play make a little bit in terms of putting the ball on the floor, making an extra play or extra move, and he could pass a bit. But I'm saying that to, to hype up Jalen Johnson. He's really like that. Uh, we were actually watching – I was watching the game on playback last night with you, uh, you Chill, and Damo. You guys that went to that game a little bit. Jalen Johnson really got game for real. I just love him in transition, Ron. I love that about him in transition. He is an athlete. The answer is so clearly Kobe White. I don't know why we're acting like it's anyone else, but it's just – well. It's not Tyrese Maxey or our press angle. It's Kobe White. He's the most improved player. In the is league. Kobe White a um? My thought was I didn't know if you were in. in no, I'm, um, done. I'm done. Is Kobe White an undervalued trade asset? Like something a team could actually sneakily go get from the Bulls, or y'all feel Chicago's not letting him slide? He's he's still young. He's only 24, I think. So I don't know if they're willing to get off of him. But he, I mean, if you want a shot making guard who can create for himself. Has improved as a playmaker exponentially. He's actually running the one for like the first time in his career. Feels like I don't know how much he's making, but he's a, he'd be a good player for a lot of teams. Kobe White. Yeah, I think he's still on his rook deal. I think he's still on his rook deal. No, no, no. I can't. Nah. He got drafted in nineteen. 
no way he's sitting on his rookie deal. Go be on his set, his. I was like, nah, he can't because Cam Johnson just signed a deal. Yeah, he, he's probably he's probably on his rookie extension, but I know he didn't he didn't get a max rookie extension. I know that, so he's probably on like okay. fifteen something like that. He's easily the most. If we're going off the definition of most improved, he's improved more than everyone else. Sangoon is just getting more minutes. Sangoon was this last year. If like was take it from the person who was he was this last year. Stylus was just hating on him. He should have been playing more last year. He would have been putting up twenty a game, but. Nah, you got to put up 15 because Silas want to start playing Usman Garuba. So that's that's Silas being an idiot. And I have my opinions on Tyrese Maxey. Kobe White's the most improved player in the NBA, in my opinion. And I don't I don't think the Bulls would come off Kobe White. I think that's one of their bright spots that they see right now in their young core. Uh, I, I think they're trying to hold on to him desperately. And on top of that, they have bigger fish to fry in terms of the trade market, in terms of getting DeRozan, even Vucevic and obviously Zach Levine out of there. And Alex Caruso, too. I think they're so focused on those four that I don't think Kobe White's name even comes up in trade talks. Hmm. Uh, Player's Choice Dave gifted 10 memberships. Uh, if you did get a membership, salute to you. Appreciate you for joining the family. And like the video and subscribe. Uh, Asad R. Also said, uh, Mars, that's cap. Name three strikers right now who have the skill of R of an R nine. Thierry, Thierry, Tony, Dale Piero. The coach systems actually covers up the lack of skill and enhances athleticism. The Mars striker, Mars, the striker position is the position that's been the most changed by the modern era because most coaches want their wingers to be their goal scorers. So the striker position, most of the great strikers would probably just play on the wing now. So, um, yeah, the striker position, you can definitely say is less skilled, but then I would just argue the center mids, for the most part, more technically gifted on top of their physicality. I mean, there's Zidane and Iniesta and Xavi, but, like, exceptions to the rule, I guess. And then fullbacks exponentially improved. Center backs much better on the ball. Goalkeepers can right. use their feet like never before. So you can use the striker position to, like, prove your point. And I would just point to goalkeepers and defenders and CDMs and everyone else. So. Our strikers uh, today, more. Our, our Stry strikers, strikers today is like when remember when remember when the big man position in the NBA was like dead in like the 2010s. Right. From that's like what the striker style. position is right now. That's that's okay. really what it is. That's how bad it is right now. Okay. I thought it was something different. I thought the striker was the long ball shooter today. No, nah, the strike was he's the one who's meant to score. He's the he's the right. goal scorer. But well, typically, but the game's changed and now. He's not really asked to score. Right. He's asked to like get other people involved and blah blah blah. But that's why the the position's just worse now. Okay. Put some respect on those swing tennis bigs, man. We good. Shout out to Al Jefferson, man. All NBA twenty fourteen. All right, fellas. Um, we are going to transition into some of the games that happened last night. Let's go ahead and see. Uh, you know what happened around the league. Who won? Who lost? Who put up a good stat line and who had a bad game? Here we go. Here we go. Right from the top. First game of the night, we got the New York Knicks beat up on the Utah Jazz. 118 to 103. Dante DiVincenzo scored 33. Colin Sexton followed up with the Jazz scoring 22 and 7. Um, did anybody catch this game? I saw, I saw some parts of it. Yeah, I saw you know, parts some of it on playback last night, and DiVincenzo gave him some really good minutes. I just think that the Knicks are so much better now defensively because of OG. So much better. How much more switchable they are on the wings, how much more chances guys take. I'm not a big Hartenstein fan as a starting five, but I think he's a great plug-in guy for them. Great plug-in guy for them. Um, they miss Quigley coming off the bench. They do miss him, but – DiVincenzo gives them really good minutes, and Josh Hart is another dirty work guy. This team's identity now with losing with losing RJ because he was another wing scorer that they had. With getting um, OG, this team's identity now more than anything is just is defense, and they can score, but it's definitely more them being defenders, and that's going to dictate a lot of their offense. That speeds the game up for them. That gets them cracking the long ball in transition. Their secondary breaks work. Their secondary breaks work a lot now because of what they create, what they generate on defense. That's going to be their mantra, who the New York Knicks are. I like what I'm seeing from them, though. I do. I think they've won eight straight, nine of their last ten. I think they've held uh, I think they've held teams – I think they've held like six of those eight teams under 100, so something like that. So they roll it. Damn, the New York Knicks are 
Absolutely the hottest team in the NBA. They are nine and one really? in their last 10 games, and they did they, they have right. won a straight. And they're the third seed in the Eastern Conference right now. Mm-hmm. I wish uh, we could talk hard as Donnie Houston, man. He's he's so good. What and you like about him, Moss? Rebounding, the hustle, the energy he plays with, finishes basically everything around the rim. Like we need a backup big. If we had Hornstein, we'd be. Could you start him at the five and move Chet over to the four? Chet. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, you said Houston. I'm sorry. I apologize. <laughs> I, I, but to I'm answer your question, yes, chill town. That's what I would do. Can, That's can, got it. Can we do that? Okay. I, I feel like you could do that. Okay. Hartenstein's a great player, man. Shout out to Hartenstein. And last night, uh, obviously, we know Mitchell Robinson's out, so that's why uh, Hartenstein is starting. Um, but last night, OG didn't play, which I'm, I'm not sure why. But also, we haven't talked about Julius Randle's shoulder injury. Huh. You guys up on this? Well, it's not it's, it's not as bad as, as what uh, they thought it was. So it looks like it's going to be just weeks instead of months. And that's a good thing because – you figure maybe he can come back after the uh, after the All Star break, and he could get himself back in the form, which is what I talked about, Mars. When I talked about that last twenty eight game stretch, guys are getting healthy, guys are getting their rhythm back. So I think that'd be good for the Knicks. But it didn't look that bad when he did it against Miami, but clearly it was, and he avoided something major. I thought it was, I thought it was really bad, but it wasn't. Uh, I know nothing about it. All I can say is. Um... Hope he gets back to 100% because they need him for the trade deadline. I'm trying to ship him to, to Utah. <laughs> Not Utah. Ship, ship him to Portland. Go get Jeremy Grant for him because I'm I'm going to down this hill. I don't oh, like Julius. Damn, I hate uh... Julius Randle hate needs to start, man. It's not you started it, Mars. Don't, don't start it. No, 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 no. See, see, see. You're the one who started I, it. I, I said, no. What, no what, I did, what I did was not hate. What I did was just be right. What I did was be right. But now everyone's hating on him. I was just right. And people were mad. That he I did exactly what you said that Damo did yesterday. I'm about to Remember? say, that sounds exactly how it was about Darvin. I was right about him. And then everybody started hating on him, piling on, <laughs> making right. memes. I'm like, you know what? Yeah, but everyone, everyone's, going, right to, no everyone's going too far this, this, on Julius. This is what Randall. happens when you tell the truth? I said, I said he wasn't <laughs> top 40. Now everyone's saying Julius Randle can't play basketball. Yes. That wasn't me. <laughs> like, where I was was just being right. And then everyone else decided to take what I did, run with it, and go left. I tried to warn you, Morris. Morris, did That's I not, not try fault. to warn That's you? Not my fault. I, I, I know right. it's not. I know it's not your fault. It's not your. It's not your fault, Morris. But it's your responsibility to make <laughs> sure that you're not leading these these follow your your viewers astray. I told you then. This is dangerous. This is thin ice you're walking on, Morris. I told you this eight months ago. I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm hating on Jules Randall by saying I just. Think they should go a different direction. They got the villain over Knicks over there. You might as well just go get somebody else to fill in that void. Like I don't. Do I, I feel like, like this team. Like Mikhail, complete the whole uh, group. Mikhail be, hey, Mikhail Mikhail be great. Would be fire over there. Mikhael I'm not gonna lie to you. No, he Mikhael wouldn't, Ron, because we already Jamie got Mikhail Bridges. Fire. We got OG well, and Obi. I mean, I mean, over here. You are, if you are bringing in just the the villain over. I mean, I'm saying as long as it's not Tom Whitmore, I don't care. Like, I don't care. Go go ahead and do that. As long as it's not Tom Whitmore, I'm I'm cool. The villain over the villain over Knicks. Go get Kyle Lowry. Why not? Keeping it pushing, fellas. Uh, the next game was between the Pacers and the Celtics. The Celtics ended up beating the Pacers 129 to 124. JT came with 37 and 7. Aaron Neesmith balled out last night, had 26, 12 rebounds, and seven mm. assists. Ahead, yeah, uh, yeah. let's talk about this game. I know Chill watched this on playback. Damo hopped on the stream. Uh, we all got to see this live and in full effect. What happened? I think they jumped on him early. And with them jumping on him early, I thought they did a good job with slowing down Tyrese Halliburton. And the fact that he was on the minute restrictions, that helped because they couldn't really get back in the rhythm once he got off the floor. When he was on the floor, even though he wasn't scoring a lot, he had them rolling, and sp- particularly in transition. When he got off the floor, they did go on a run and got themselves back in the game because of defense, because you had guys taking untimely shots. The Celtics couldn't make a shot. And the reason why they couldn't make a shot, because Indiana, <laughs> coincidentally, was playing defense, considering they one of the worst defensive teams in the league. But then the Celtics started playing defense. And it took a lot of energy, Ron, to get back in the game when you're down by that many. So they were down by 20 at one point. 
And the fact that they started the third quarter, I think they went on a 13-0 run to start the third quarter, and they got themselves right back in the game. But then with them doing that, that took a lot of their energy away from them when Halliburton went off the floor. So now they what, – what's the kid's name, that the backup point guard that they had? Nimbar, He's Andrew getting – Nimhart. Him getting downhill. Now, those are shots the, – the shots that he was getting, of course the Celtics would have played – um, the Celtics would have played Halliburton different. But the fact that he's on the floor, they're giving him that mid-range look. They're giving him that downhill look. And Porzingis getting in foul trouble, that really hurt them too because now he can't protect the rim like he could. But Keita gave them damn good minutes. He gave them damn good minutes last night. And I liked what I saw from him. But uh, this Indiana team, if they, could continue, if they could continue to be consistent in playing defense, they could get better then I think they can make some noise in the playoffs. I don't hate the Siakam trade. I don't hate it because I think he's a good plug-in for those guys. I don't think he's the difference in them winning the Eastern Conference Championship. I do think that he can help them win a playoff series depending on who they play in the first round. But the Celtics handled their business last night. That's exactly what they did. Keogh was on the Kings, right, last year? Yeah. He was in the G League. I seen him cook James Wiseman. Yeah. He, 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 was playing, he was playing with Stockton. Yeah, yeah, I've seen him cook. Yeah, he, he actually had a really good summer league when he was coming out. His summer league was really good. I'm, I thought we was gonna hang on to him and get and you know work him into the rotation a little bit. But shout out mm -hmm. to him though. I like his game. Like he, he's game. definitely he's definitely a good player. He's underrated too. And he deserves all the minutes. He's, I, he's better than Luke Cornett. I'm gonna just put it like that. He's better than Luke Cornett. He looks I'm way gonna, bigger than what I'm, he is. I'm I had to ask Show last night, like, yo, how how tall is this? I had him at, I had him at listed at six ten. He's seven foot. I mean, he looks huge, bro. Yeah, that was my fault. Mm -hmm. Mr. Haitian cat, right? I'm a little biased. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little bit biased because he went to Utah State. So uh, yeah. I'm a little biased when it comes to him. I do want to say, too, Um, I want to apologize. Because in my midst of hyping up Tyrese Halliburton and saying that he was this, that, and the second coming and the best passing player in the NBA and all of that, which I still stand on, by the way. Um. I downgraded and degraded the other guys. I said his yes, Pacers team sucked. Yes, you did. And right now on national YouTube, in front of the whole world, I apologize because I flat out lied to you guys. And this, this is you this is before Pascal me. Siakam too. So obviously he he helps the W group. accountability. Folks. But thank you. W. But this Pacers crew can go. They ain't whack, yo. They really can go in. First of all, I want to say Aaron e. Smith, he's really shown me something because I, I actually thought he was trash. I'm not gonna lie. When playing, he was at Boston, on, yeah, yeah. I thought he was because he didn't play. Mm -hmm. And just, just from what I seen of him, I thought he was trash. Every time I've watched him play this year, he's looked good. He's and mm -hmm. last night he he really bought it. He went out just and tell him, like, yo, I, I seen you every day in practice last year. I know what you got. And something tells me that he's like JT, you didn't see me too. So you you know, you know how I could get down as well. But I, I, I just got to give them their props. And I also do want to say, you know, I wouldn't be me if I didn't take things a step too far. The <laughs> Celtics don't want it with the Pacers. So the Celtics they and the Bucks don't want it with the Pacers. That's, no, I'm, and I'm going to tell you why the Celtics don't want so it with the Pacers. who wants it with the Pacers? The, hey, the Pacers already put it on the, on, on the Celtics in the in-season tournament at full strength. And this is without Pascal. Then they, but, beat, the, then they beat the Pacers three or the four times they played them already. Wrong. Which now one? think about the one time that the Pacers won. Well, no, 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 no. Last night didn't count. Last night didn't, didn't fully count. It counts in the record books. But Tyrese Halliburton's on a minute restriction. But also, too, Benedict Matherin didn't play. If, so if it I'm don't count? Mistaken, if I'm it not mistaken, hey, I'm just saying if Tyrese, if Tyrese even plays that game the four minutes, they win. If Benedict Matherin games plays, don't count. Hey, if Benedict, <laughs> no, I said, it technically it counts. It counts in the record books. <laughs> Big Ox, Big Ox got that look like, what are you talking about? But, I mean, if, 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 if Tyrese isn't on minute restrictions and if Benedict Matherin is there, the game is a little bit different, and they beat the Celtics. They beat them. You didn't have to get nasty, Ron. You could have just... <laughs> yes, for real, right? You could have just had W accountability. I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making it. I'm just making it. Right 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 I'm, right right I'm making an observation, and I'm letting you guys know, if Tyrese, if Tyrese Halliburton can play... Fifteen more minutes, like how we would in a re in a regular game. And if Benedict Matherin, their third best player, is there, things just look a little different. 
You, all do. you had to do was just come on and set the president for what we're doing on Player's Choice, which is being accountable for our takes. You just had to leave it there. That would have been a perfect clip. Yeah, that would have been the end of it. That would have been. Oh the no, end no, 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 no! I'm yeah. not into making perfect clips. I'm into saying things perfectly for the first ten seconds, and then the last ten seconds just cannonballing off a cliff. But I also do got to say, for real, for real, I really do got to say, like, come playoff time, the Celtics don't want it with the Pacers. They smoked the Pacers in five games. Smoked them. All right. Okay. This man, they smoked them in five games. Hey, come uh, playoff time, mid break. I'm, I'm gonna have my hand out, ready to bet everybody. In. Okay, all right, no problem. They smoked them in five games. I'm taking super chat bets as well. Uh, DSG Piccolo sent through a super chat and said, I'm convinced <laughs> at this point that Damo hates anything Portland related. Why would you wish Julius Randle on my blazer? <laughs> Because I'm trying to free Jeremy Grant. Come on, man. He's great about it. Julius goes to a situation where he can just be Julius, you know, get his points, get his buckets. It's a win-win. My camera is tripping today. What's happening right now? Down the wild as hell. <laughs> this is that's a W move. That's a win-win trade for both teams. It 100 percent is Damo. Thousand. Jamie, Jamie Grant over there with the Knicks. I changes it. Just fits right in. Back to yeah. it. The Los Angeles Lakers lost to the Atlanta Hawks last night, 138 to 122. The Lakers are now below 500 at 24 and 25. Uh, LeBron had 29 and 8. Trey Young had 26 and 13. Mm -hmm. Um it was a, a, a another storyline behind the game because obviously DeJounte Murray is the most coveted piece right now for the Los Angeles Lakers. He had 24 points, nine assists, and the other guy who the Lakers are seemingly trying to trade, D'Angelo Russell, didn't play oh so hot. He had nine points and went three for 11. Austin Reed, on the other hand, had 28. Ron, I want to start the conversation by saying the beginning of the season, I had the Lakers as the only real contender in the Western Conference. I was 100% wrong about that. So I want to apologize to the rest of the Western Conference because I was way wrong about that. I want to apologize to accountability. Florida. I want to Check apologize to Oklahoma to City. I want to apologize to the Clippers because I only had the Lakers as the legit contender in the West. And that is just not true. That is not true. The Lakers are not very good. And they are not the only contenders in the Western Conference. I have a difficult time watching them sometimes, to be honest with you. Because I said this to Damo yesterday. It's the same thing we go over with these guys. The same thing. At least when we talk about other teams, there's different things that we go over. Okay, this team didn't rebound. Or this team could have done a better job in closing the, closing the door. Something like that. With the Lakers, it's the same thing over and over and over again. And it's getting corny, man. It's getting corny. Are you saying that they're not contenders or that there are other teams that are also contenders? I'm saying that there are other teams that are also contenders. I've so the, seen Lakers the Lakers are still contenders? Well, I seen we, we saw last year that they were bad, and then we saw what happened when they got into the playoffs and they went on a run. So I can't completely just discount that. But what I can do is I can add the other teams that I was discounting. That's what I also could do. Okay. Thoughts on this game, though? Does, does anybody have any takeaways or anything that they want to talk about? I just want to say with all the narratives that I've been seeing be pushed again, um, I'm not going to sit here and blame Darvin Ham for the lack of energy and execution. I can't blame him. I can only blame the coaches watching that game. There were so many things that happened that legit was on the players. There's nothing Darvin Ham could have took his hands out of his pocket and said to make them not do some of the dumb <laughs> stuff that they did during that game. Just idiotic plays, lack of hustle, Lack of energy, just everything. It, it, it was whack. It was whack to watch. I, I kept – I didn't really watch the game. I, I turned it on every now and then, saw a couple clips. It looked horrible. I know when I got in there with Chill and was watching on playback, we'll flip to it. It looked horrible. The product looked horrible. Um, And then you go and look, and it looks like it, it, it's nothing but hoopla in the locker room. All of my timeline, I'm seeing LeBron cryptic tweets at 2.30 in the morning. I'm seeing Christian Wood cryptic tweets. I'm seeing AD cryptic interviews and tweets. Everyone's cryptic tweeting. I don't get. I don't know what's going on. Everyone says they love the coach, but no one is acting like it. I will say y'all got to stop with this whole taking screenshots or taking a picture during the game and creating your own narratives. That whole LeBron is sick of Darvin Ham because he looked at him for two seconds on the bench while he's upset about losing a basketball game. What are we doing? Like these false narratives being pushed just because y'all don't like the coach is nasty ass work. Um, 
as far as the Lakers, I'm not at this point with how this team is. I'm not surprised. I, I'm genuinely not surprised we're dealing with this. But like I told Chill Town last night, I look at this season. Obviously, we're not reaching the expectation. We're not. We're not reaching the expectations I set. Shit's not going the way I hope. But looking at how, where we were last year before the trade deadline, we're in a way better situation. Like compared to the team that was traded at the deadline and where we were last year at this time, we're still in a good situation. The season's not over. Obviously, we're not going to be a team that's going to be a top three seed, but I'm subscribing to the belief, just make the damn playoffs. As long as we make the playoffs, there is a shot. Um, LeBron still is able to flip a switch. AD is still the best defender in the West. I like our chances against anybody still. And as long as the lump doesn't lump it up in the playoffs, <laughs> I like our chances. But, hey, Damo, is, if you don't mean mug your coach like once a game or no, maybe not once a game, but at least every other game or, you know, during practice or something, like what type of team is this? You know I'm saying like you ain't that wrong with mugging your coach a little bit. Like that doesn't mean I hate the guy. Like you just he he might have just said something. Be like, what type of shit is That's he talking fact. about? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, shut up. That's man. A, you know, like, no big deal. Boy. I mean, if, if your coach is coaching you hard, that that tends to happen. Yeah. If, if if Darvin Ham is like, yo, Brian, get your big ass back on defense. <laughs> bro, I'm supposed to be like, yo, what are you talking? about? All right, you right, you right. Come on, I, you I need, looking I need, at him I need, like, bro, to... you know who I am. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like. But, and LeBron is the type of guy we've seen it. We've heard it from other coaches that he's had. It just, hey man, have drawn up a play for the guy. Like he's just gonna. We heard Mike Brown say, "I was just letting LeBron do what he wanted at 21." Just hey, what what am I gonna draw up for him? We have seen LeBron. Write, no one likes to talk about the David Black year. We have seen him write off David Black. No, we're not doing this. We're not doing this. Kyrie, get this ball. We taking this shot. Like hey, Tyler, we're not doing this. To, hey, Kyrie, come get this shot. We've this is a known thing from LeBron. He ain't pulled his shit in, 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 in Miami. I will say that. Yeah, we don't hear no stories about him overdoing what the coach says in Miami. Everywhere else, he's always done that with the coach. So this is nothing new. This is nothing crazy. He's always had disagreements with how coaches like to coach him if he doesn't see fit because he's the smart one. I just don't like how people are taking the clip of him darting his eye at Darvingham on the bench screenshot and make it like he was giving him the almighty death stare. Like, you go look at the clip. He did two seconds. It was like a millisecond he looked at him and looked back, whatever. Yeah. But they took that one frame, and you would think that, oh, yeah, Darvin Ham is fired. Like, LeBron is about to go and be the GM once again. It's just nasty propaganda. You can't even you focus know. on basketball. It's so many non-basketball things that go on with the Lakers. It's impossible to focus on basketball. It's just disgusting. You know, though, it's a, it's a lot of people that have uh like issues with authority, or you know what I'm saying issues with being told something. So when they see stuff like that, they just assume like, oh, it's a problem. Because if somebody would have told me what to do, even though they're the coach of my team, I would have bugged out. Like, it's not that deep, bro. You can you can disagree with something and still not be upset and be like, I'm I'm still either I'm gonna do it or I'm not gonna do it. But just me looking at them like that, like it's not a big deal. This it's a team, like. Even so, what I'm saying is like I didn't know, uh, Domo, that it was just that quick, like a quick look up and down. But had it been a mug, like let's give him three seconds. You know what I'm saying? If it would have been like three seconds, still would have been like, well, it's really not that serious. <laughs> like I mean, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that. Oh, has he lost the locker room? Like no, nah, he ain't lost the locker room. He just said something that his star didn't want to hear, but he knew you know whether it was right or wrong. Y'all leave Darvin Ham alone, man. Like I, I, I'm so sick of the the hate this man. Oh, oh, oh. I'm so Whoa. Oh, him for no reason. Like it's baseless. <laughs> it's baseless hate and claims being given by Darvin Ham. At least when I was opening your eyes and telling y'all the truth, I'm pointing at like direct things. I will go and show guys to get. We'll be watching the game. I'm like, look, this is what I'm talking about right here. Y'all are just going out here with these terrorist pictures as your abbies on Twitter. Call him a terrorist. Oh, because Ruby only played 25 minutes. Like, all right, gang. Like, Damo, you, you the one who got him jumped. <laughs> Damo, you the one who got him jumped, and now you breaking up the fight going, yo, yo, stop. That's enough. That's enough. You the one who started this, though, even though it's the truth. Some of it is some of it is the truth, but this is your doing, though. We can't leave that part out, Damo. It's not like, yo, we'll just leave this dude alone, and it's just <laughs> baseless. No, you the one who started it. Yo, hey, Ron, he the one who said that he was trying to kick it to your girl, but he was just waiting for you to get out the room. Yo, Ron, he said this, and then when we jump on you, then it's like, hey, wait a minute, Ron. No, nah, you ain't got to do that to him. You told us what it was. 
what would you expect to happen? I'm I'm, I'm using Mars' line. Um, I was just telling y'all the truth, man. Y'all just hate me for no reason. <laughs> I was just telling everybody. I was just opening everybody's eyes to the truth before oh, y'all was ready oh, for it. Oh. I wasn't. I wasn't trying to start a riot. Like whoa, like, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't expect it to happen like this. I was just trying to get y'all to see the truth. The 2024 plot twist and New Year's resolutions all around player's choice, not just from Damo, not just from Mars, even Chill, Big Ox, myself included. Ticket, eh. But the 2024 New Year's resolutions have been amazing. It's been quite the plot twist uh, and interesting to see. I didn't I didn't see this happening in November, December. I didn't even think it was going to last January 7th. But here we are a month into it, and I see everybody sticking to their guns, and I like to see it. I like to see it. Uh, moving along. The Bulls and the Raptors played last night, and the Raptors beat the Bulls 118 to 107. Gary Trent Jr., 24 points. DeMar DeRozan, 25 and 5 assists. Thoughts, comments, reactions to this game? Chicago blow it up. Like, get, there's, no reason, <laughs> like, there's no reason why these guys should still be on this team at this point. Blow it up. Send DeMar somewhere. Send Zach somewhere. Send Big Vooch somewhere. Hell, at this point, send Drummond somewhere. Like, there, there's no reason why. You should still Ron, what's the direction of this crew? What is the direction of this crew, Ron? What are we doing? Who is our franchise player? They did sign Vooch to that extension, but is Vooch their franchise player? Who is their league guard? Is Kobe White going to be their league guard of the future? Is he their guy? What exactly is it that they're doing? Zach Levine's been in and out of the lineup. We don't know how we're using him. We don't know what we're using him for. DeMar DeRozan is 35, I think. I think he's 35 years old. What exactly are they doing in Chicago? You got Alex. You have all these assets. You can start over and get one, a franchise player, and build the unit around that guy, as opposed to trying to piece together things to make it look like you're trying. Are you not? The Chicago Bulls are, a, at best, a play-in team, which I don't think is a playoff team. They're a play-in team, and they get bounced in the play-in tournament. That's who they are. Yeah, if I'm the Bulls, I'm trading the four top guys. Every, basically, everybody but Kobe White's untouchable. And I'm trading Zach, Big Fella, and DeMar DeRozan by the summertime. They're out of here. And we're just we just building from scratch. You could get something for, 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 for drumming too. You could get you can get your oh second yeah, yeah. Drum, as well. I think I think you can get your second round pick, send him to a contender, and you could get your second round pick and use that to build your unit as opposed to trying to trick everybody into thinking that, yo, we're competitive and, and, and we're trying. No, you're not. You are not. I'm even going to try to flip Lonzo Ball for something. Everybody's gone. What kind of value do you think he has? I'll take him. I'll take him in Houston. Somebody a bet on him. Hmm. For Jock Lando and Aaron Holiday, I'll take Lonzo Ball. If, he's, if you can get some legit minutes out of him. Yeah, I'm not the saying there's no way there's no way no one's gonna not take the risk on him. He's he still got talent. Like he's not out the league yet because of injuries. He's gonna get shot. Yeah, Greg Oden came yeah, back. Yeah, like, Greg Oden got a second chance. Oh yeah, I'm, hey Houston. I'm just saying. I heard we were looking into Robert Williams. He ain't playing this season. Why not take the risk on Lonzo? Last but not least, uh it was a big game last night, or it kind of was. Uh, the 76ers and the Warriors played, and the Warriors beat the Sixers 119 to 107. Uh, Joel did play last night, was injured, but Steph Curry had 37, 8, and 7, and Tobias Harris led the Sixers attack with 26 and 10. Mars, this knee injury is way worse. It's not, I don't think it's anything structural, like a torn ligament or anything like that. But I think that it's way worse than what's advertised. And tendonitis is uh, tendonitis is a it's, it's it's tough to to deal with tendonitis, especially when you are that size. And but to to watch Joel Embiid yesterday, to watch him last night, I didn't watch the whole game, but to watch him last night, he was laboring. He looked like he had a piano on his back. He didn't get in. He didn't have any lift in his shot. He couldn't rebound. He barely could get back in transition. He wasn't getting up and down the floor like he normally does, and they rely on him so much. Ron, when you got a guy that's averaging 35 a game and 11 rebounds, this dude is huge to whatever it is that you're doing, both offensively and defensively. And when this dude is on the floor 
and he's ailing, that's kind of screwing up anything that you're doing. So a dude like Tobias Harris, do I go? Do I not go? Do I rock? Do I not rock? Because he's on the floor, as opposed to when he's not on the floor. I think six games that they didn't have him, Tobias Harris is averaging like 26 a game with him off the floor. So this Philadelphia team, they go as Joel B goes, and he's clearly ailing right now. And as long as that's going on, this Philadelphia team is going to go the other way. I agree with everything you said, Chill, but I will say this. Their next game is Thursday. If Joel Embiid suits up and plays Thursday, he was ducking Jokic. I don't care what nobody says. He just, went, <laughs> he just, underwent, he just underwent an MRI. He's not playing for the I, 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 I feel you. I, I feel you. I feel He's you. I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. If so he, he does play. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If he just got hurt. Uh, he just aggravated that injury, whatever it was. All I'm saying is he shouldn't play. I, I don't want him to play. If he suits up, He's ducking. You ducking he's trying he to play. He's trying to get his 65 games, man. Right, he's so trying to the, get to 65. And then what is that? And what does that say about the Sixers organization that y'all will allow him after that injury, after not playing in Denver because of this ailing injury he's been having, and you know he's still hurt. You gonna let him suit up and play that game, but you didn't want him to suit up and play in Denver? Yeah, he's ducking. And on top of that, and on top of that, Damo, I'm sure you saw how he played last night. Let's just say that he plays in a couple more games. Are we still talking about Joel Embiid in league in league MVP conversation? 15 and 7, 17 and 6. Are we still talking about him like that? Just because he's there? No. We since we're talking, and unless somebody else wanted to say something about the, the, the game itself, I did want to speak about the rule thing because because Reese came out with a comment talking about how he didn't like the rule. And I do find it funny at well, real quick, Mars Ox, did y'all want to talk about the, the Sixers game at all? Uh, mm-hmm. I do want to say Tyrese Maxey didn't play last night as well. Mm-hmm. And then I uh, want to talk about the Warriors starting lineup too, but go ahead, Dom. We'll, we'll circle back around to that. You, you sure? We can go into it real quick because this is, again, this is about the award. It's going it, 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 to be a new topic at whole, at whole so I didn't yeah. want to just... Wrong. Go, 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 go. Have, have you guys seen the Warriors start lineup over the last, I think, two to three games? Well, without Clay, it was, it was <laughs> Steph, Pajimski, Wiggins, Kaminga, and Draymond. Okay. Um, I just wanted to mention that Kaminga has been balling since he's got in the starting lineup. Last night he had 26 points, seven rebounds. Game before that he balled out. So shout out Kaminga. He's hey Ron, you, know, he's definitely Steve definitely Kerr, it, 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 you talk about mm-hmm. Damo, you talk about that lump on his if Steve Kerr don't turn this boy Kaminga loose, I'm gonna be on CNN. I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna be on CNN for murder. Take the take, like Nancy, take the, like Nancy Grace. Man, take the, uh, that's what I'm gonna be on it. Take the clamps off this dude and turn him loose. <laughs> Involve this dude in the offense. Turn him loose, man. He, what averaged, you, 20, he averaged 21 in January. In, in January. And that's not even that's not even being turned loose, Mars. That's he was kind of turning him loose. Turn this dude loose, man. He's the future of your organization. Him, this kid pods. Moody, the problem with Moody is is Moody will rock and then Clay will rock. And then Moody will be in and out of the lineup. So I'm not really sure exactly what it is that y'all are doing with him. When you got the older guys on their way out, you ushered the younger guys in. This guy Moody, I dig this kid Pods, man. The more I watch him, he just looks so much. He just looks so much more comfortable in that Golden State Warriors system, playing with Draymond because Draymond looks for him in the offense, and he can actually and and he can actually give effort defensively. So, in closing, Damo, turn this kid Kaminga loose, man. Was he a one and done? Was Pods a one and done, or did he play a couple years in college? He transferred to um, Santa Clara from. Okay, so he's played a couple uh, years in college. It makes he did, sense. He did four. He did four. He did two summer wrestling and two at Santa Clara. Yeah, I'm about to say. So it maybe, makes maybe, sense. Maybe why his game is that. That's why no, his game is that. He wasn't a juco. He went, he went to Illinois. He went to Illinois okay. and then transferred. Okay. okay, that would explain it. I I love these guys that um, pause that stay in that actually stay in college longer than a year and let their games develop because they come into the NBA typically ready to go compared to other rookies like more J-Dub. more mature. J Dub, or what you call it? Um, uh, Hami Hawkins, um, mm-hmm. down in Miami again. I was telling people Hami in the summer, like, hey, kids, not well, when he got drafted, I'm not gonna say in the summer, I said in the summer when he got drafted, I was like, that's a good spot for him, but yeah, I, I genuinely said, <laughs> was that necessary? I, um, when did come when did the fiasco with Kaminga start with him having an issue about his minutes and his playing time? When, um, they, lost, when they lost it, the was Denver. A game, it was a game they lost where the- he didn't play in like the fourth quarter. And he was when they lost to Denver well. when Joker hit that buzzer beater. When he said but he I'm lost saying, faith, was, in, that, in, uh, was that like December? Was that late December or was that it was on Christmas? January? It was, it was on Christmas. Christmas. 
Okay. Yes. It was on Christmas. Me, it Joker hit that buzzer beater. It's funny to me that, and since January, he's been averaging 21. It's funny to me that when we see these guys lash out and do these things that people would deem unprofessional to get their points across, shit kind of works. The message comes across. The message comes across, and shit kind of works a little bit. A lot of these guys that go out there with D'Lo had an issue with how the Lakers was using him. He went on his podcast and talked about it. Ever since then, trade talks and hey, D'Lo, we're gonna let you rock. He been bold. He, I He's think play the Christian Wood Revenge Tour is that I'm hearing Christian Wood Revenge Tour. Hey man, uh -oh. might be. I think I think it's a little different with Jack K though. I think it was more so <clears throat> like it's, it wasn't just him speaking up; it was also him stepping up and doing what he had to do on the court. You know what I'm saying? Cutting down on some of the bonehead plays. You know what I'm saying? Still, every once in a while, he he's still young. Every once in a while, he'll make a mistake, but he's cutting down on it. He's competing even more on the defensive end, and I don't think he ever was a was a problem on the defense. But I think so. What I'm saying is, I think it's more so, Steve. Like, okay, go ahead, youngin. If you if you can do it, and he's showing out, like, nah, I'm I'm ready. So I hope that's more so the case that he's actually just he's stepping up to to be who Steve wants him to be. Nah, but Ox, when I told you he was gonna be all right, it was trade him. It was they don't need him. It was, was that he that, sucked. He was, couldn't play. I mean, when I, I told you, the, when I told you the boy could ball, and he was only nineteen years old, I told let's, you he was let's gonna not, be all let's right. Let's not make this. Let's not make you, this about no, me and you, no, man. Let's, no, let's stay focused it. on no, the young fella. Let's make. Let's stay focused on the young fella. About you taking accountability like me and Chill did when you said they need to come up off him. You said they need to trade him. You said that he's not gonna fit over there and he's not gonna be what he is doing right now. You hey, you chastised him. I said that he wasn't going to be there. Now you're crazy, Steve Kerr. I said that wasn't going to be his. I said that he wasn't going to be their franchise player. That's what I said, Ron. I said I don't think he has the IQ to be their franchise player. Nor do I think he's good enough. I, I think he's a good player, but I don't think he's going to be what they want him to be. That still is yet to be proven. But I was like impressed. Steve I'm Henderson, impressed. Uh -oh. I said that he was 19 years uh, old. Who who, who Henderson? You, who? Who school, school, school. Okay, school. I, I make sure I'll be having, there. I've been having pronunciation problems this Actually, year. I don't know good. what's going on. There's something in the air. Oh, oh. Good. Good. But good. you gotta let these young dudes develop. True. Just like we get better in life, just like as you get older, you get smarter mm -hmm. and you can do certain things better. Like, yo, you're playing against grown men. You're, you're playing. You're in a whole different universe when you step into the NBA. You gotta you. The game has to slow down, but you still have to get better. You still have to get stronger. You still have to learn how to shoot better. You still just everything. You you still have to learn that system. I was told that he wasn't smart enough to learn the system. No, you just you 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 got to You got to grow into it and get better. My fault, Damo. That was a uh, um the, the the Christmas game. That was in Denver. The game that Joker mm -hmm. hit that buzzer beater was a week later. That was the game when 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 it went the other way. Well, I, I just remember because at that time when Steve Kerr responded to it, he was like, my door is always open. Like, there's never been a situation where my door is not open. And I brought that up because I feel like maybe in this situation, Kaminga went and had another conversation with him. And it was along the lines of what Ox is saying. Like, all right. He gave him the confidence. He gave him the okay, like, all right, I'm, I'm going to give you the key. Not give you the keys, but we're going to see what you got. I'm going to give you the opportunity that you're working for. And maybe that's all he wanted. Some people, all they need is the the okay or the the understanding that they're going to be allowed to play mm -hmm. ball the way they want to play ball. Some people, and this is something I suffered from when I was hooping as a kid. I hated the fact that if I messed up, I'm gonna get yanked out the game. But I played for a coach that every mistake I made, I get yanked out. Now I'm trying not to make a mistake. I'm not. I'm not playing ball. I'm trying not to make a mistake, and you're gonna make more mistakes. And I feel like Camino was suffering from that because he would get yanked out the lineup because he wasn't getting consistent minutes because he couldn't finish games. He's trying not to make mistakes so he can get more minutes. Have, I feel like he had a conversation with Steve Kerr again. I'm just going off what I think based off of the change in attitude with how he's playing. I would assume they had a conversation. He has that confidence now, and I love it. I'm gonna tell you what Steve's really doing though. Steve, Steve, and Mike Dunleavy had a conversation. Like, yo, we know the kids. We know we know the kid got a little game. Steve, let him go crazy. Build up his trade value. Trade that trade that uh, deadline ain't up yet, Damo. <laughs> You're not lying. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, I do it's also want to mention okay, with the Warriors that um, another character has been balling since he's hit the starting lineup. Uh, Andrew Wiggins on the low has put together some solid performances over his last five games. Uh, he's, he's had over his last five games, 16 points, 12 points, 17, and then the last two games, 22 and 23. 
You know what this sounds like? Damn, what Andrew Wiggins doing, bro? That's he should have been doing this. I already, I already gave him his flowers for proving me <laughs> wrong around twenty two when he like came when he re- revived his career. Then he just pulled a monsters performance and just fell off the face of the earth. I don't give a damn. That's like saying, "Oh, Ben Simmons is doing good. You're supposed to be doing good. Stay healthy for Ben." But I mean, you're supposed to do good. I'm not surprised you're doing good. Bron, that's like. Ron, the, the Warriors remind me of a, of, of, a, of a house fire, and then you go into the house and you find out what else is still working and take that. Everything else is garbage, though, but you just find out what else is still working and you take that with you. The Warriors are the Titanic. They are a sinking ship, and nobody wants to admit it. Nobody. Because Clay is still on the team. Steph is still on the team. Draymond's still on the team. These dudes got a shot at winning the NBA championship. Meanwhile, they're in 12th place in the Western <laughs> Conference. 12th. <laughs> Garbage. But the, the, these these dudes still have an these dudes still have a shot at at doing it. Oh, guys like Kaminga, uh, Pods, Moody, um, this kid, uh, D- this kid Davis Jackson, Jackson Davis, who I love by the way. These guys are the future of this unit. It's time to move on. Period. It is time to move on. What was is exactly that. It was. It's time to move on with the kids. Yeah, Shout out to a- Mars for having the foresight to get off the shit before. Facts. <laughs> he didn't have no damn foresight, man. Mars seen Bob Myers jump ship. He was like, well, if he jumped ship. I I have my full of Myers left. Mars left. Mars left. I left a good Myers full of me. Mars left. Mars had the inside sources from Warriors Twitter and was like, nah, yeah, the rumble with Bob Myers left. Bob Myers is going. I'm out too. What you said, Damo? Where, where you going? Let me go get my bag too. <laughs> the captain jumping off. Hey, let me, Bob, my, let me Bob Myers like and me leave, and Bob Myers is like, hmm, Mars left. Is that something I'm not saying? Let me analyze the situation. Ooh, yeah, this doesn't look great. I'm gonna leave at the end of the season. That's what he. That's what happened. He followed me. Yo, Damo, uh, you had an agenda to push. So before I get to these super chats, I'm gonna hear exactly what you. I don't know if it was an agenda. You just had something that you was trying to say. Oh yeah, 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 the sixty-five games thing. Um, no, I seen my glorious King Tyrese. He came out with a a statement, basically saying the the rule is whack. Listen to all you injury-prone players, and I want to know how y'all, how do y'all actually feel about the rule now, seeing this in effect, the players that will be affected by it, anything like that. Because me, I still love the rule. I understand some of you guys can't help your health. I understand, and hey, that sucks. But, man, we're not about to reward guys for playing 55 games when you got a guy that's playing 75, 80 games and is doing the equal amount of work. Unless I had this take on it, unless it's a situation where the guy's playing, if a guy plays 62, 63, 64 games, but he's averaging 35, 36, 30. Joel Embiid numbers, essentially. If Joel Embiid is averaging MVP numbers, he plays 64, 65 games, 64, 63 games, and it's clear he's clearly better than whoever is second, third. Okay, maybe we have a conversation. But guys out here looking like they're about to be on pace to play 55. You can't do that, Damo. You can't do that, Damo. Problem. It's a slippery slope. If no, you can't, you can't do that. It's got to be It's got to be 65 or nothing. Or that's it's what I'm gonna saying. Be, it's it's going to be voters Yeah, it's the arbitrary cutoff. Yeah. And then that's why if Joel B plays 64 games, averaging 36, we're going to be like, well, why is the cutoff 65 and not 64? And then someone's gonna be like, "Oh, you're right, because Joel Embiid did this. Is he really worse than this guy who made it above him, who played 67 games?" And it's like, okay, so I guess we can make an exception there. And then next time, someone will play 62 games. It's like, well, Joel Embiid made it playing 64. What's really difference between 64 and 62? And then you're back to 52 games when you make it. It is slippery slope. Well, I, I like it this way because it makes it makes availability an actual part of the vote. We always say availability is the best ability. So now they're directly putting that in your vote by making it to where you have to, you know, you have to meet certain requirements. That's why it's like it's 65 or nothing. If you go under 65, you're no longer eligible because availability is the best ability. Be, uh, the availability is the best ability, and you don't have that in your bag, so you're not eligible. I just think it should be tied to the money. No, that's why. I, 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 that's all I think. But if you I'm play 64 going. games, you can play 65 games. Availability, well, avail- availability should be tied to the money, Mars. It should. No, nah, I, I don't. The money that's tied to all NBA selections, I don't. I oh, don't think. not that part. Not that part. And you need to play sixty-five to play to get. All yeah, NBA. yeah, but I'm. I if mean, you miss you miss out on 30, 40 million because you played sixty-two games. 
I'd say the well, most dumb. Team. Okay, well, okay, well, then, yeah, yeah. So, no, it should be tied into it. If you're not playing, you shouldn't get paid like you're playing. Wait a minute, man. Why are we wait a minute? Why are we doing this? The, the fact that we actually even had to make this rule is the problem mm -hmm. because these dudes were, 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 were playing when they felt like it. That's where this whole thing came from. So, am I going to pay you like a top notch player? What do top notch players do? They are available. And the fact that you play 62 games, well, how often is that? Okay, I'm gonna the, the, the rule is 65 games. I'm gonna get the 62 and I'm gonna conk out. I'm gonna get the 63 and I'm gonna conk out. Or I'm gonna get just past that. I'm gonna get the 67 and then I'm gonna get hurt. Well, wait a minute, man. The fact that we even had to do this says a lot about where the state of availability was. The, the, these guys, we shouldn't have to worry about you being available. Mars, if you are genuinely hurt and you can't go, that's one thing. If you are genuinely hurt, like Joel Embiid, this is a problem with his knee. Uh, Kawhi Leonard, this was a this was a problem. I'm not fooled by what was what's what's going on this season. I'm not. I'm I'm, I'm not fooled by what was going on this season. I'm I'm not. I will I'm say this. Not. No, no, no. Kawhi Leonard, he's been pulling the rug over people's faces for a minute. I ain't gonna lie. Mm. There's no if way. He, if, if he after, did. after all these years of degenerative knees, you won't yeah. play 85 games. Nah, yeah. gang, that's crazy. But if, now, now I will if, say, if you see in the summertime. His knees are the size of watermelons, and he waddling everywhere. Then I'm like, okay, he 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 killed his body to do it. I I get it. But if Kawhi is just just fine for the rest of his career, playing around seventy ish games, out of nowhere when his rules came a minute, all right, he was pulling the rug off people's head. The only reason I brought this up, guys like Reese, I don't think have a right to be complaining about the rule. Someone like Embiid, because Embiid was the first, well, not the first person, but Embiid was one of the prominent people I heard complaining about it. And I will say. For a guy like Embiid, I do feel like this rule is shitty for a guy like him and the rest of his career. Because Embiid came in, I've said this before, Embiid came into the NBA injury-prone, injury plague, hurt. He's literally only played more than 65 games in his career twice. In those years, it was 68 and 66, if I'm not mistaken. Last year, yeah, 66. Yeah, 68, 66. Other than that, he had like a 61 and a 60. And then the other years were 50s, 35s, whatever it was, because he was injured. A guy like Embiid, and I'm just trying to take it away from me being a fan or anything like that. I'm just trying to see from his POV. Joel Embiid came into this game hurt. He's only played this game hurt. He does nothing but to to continue to be hurt. If you telling me I'm about to have to sacrifice my dollars now because James Harden, LeBron, Kawhi, Paul George, Richard Jefferson, whoever other players was taking advantage of not playing because they were sitting, and now a guy like me who genuinely gets hurt, genuinely is hurt other than when I have to go play Jokic in Denver. I'm not ducking no grinds. And now I can't make, I, I'm not eligible for no more awards in my career. I'm not going to be eligible to get X amount of dollars for the rest of my career. I know he's at like 30 with his knees and legs, more like 35. So it's not like he has, <clears throat> theoretically, he doesn't have like 10 more years to go, <laughs> theoretically. No, Just, he's not going to that much longer. With no, that size and like that, so. theoretically, he doesn't have that much longer. But this rule being implemented for the next three, four years that he has left to play at a high level, I assume, I feel like he is getting shafted. I understand it. I'm not mad at the rule. I get the rule. The rule is beyond Joel. Like, this rule is bigger than you, but I'm just trying to look at it from a different POV, take it away from myself being a fan, take it away from going through the James Harden era and the LeBron era of guys sitting randomly missing it. Take it out of all that. Just look at it as a guy who, honestly, there is – he, it's not like he's making an excuse. He's even played in the playoffs hurt majority, if not all of his career. This guy genuinely gets hurt, and now he's getting shafted by this rule. That's why. But Reese, man, shut up and ball, bro. You you shouldn't be out here complaining about it. Uh, and I'd be Reese, about it. I'm sorry, money, but I mean, I guess Reese actually has a reason reason to be complaining. He uh, and I'm not saying this to to cap cape form or anything, but he legitimately has forty million dollars on the line if he doesn't get to 65 games. You, you, so, that's, you mean that's, the, so, Ron, you mean in addition to the $250 million deal he, he just signed? Yeah, didn't he just sign a deal? He just signed a super deal. Okay. Actually, I get it. I get it. I get it. Yeah, he I, just signed, I, yeah, he just signed a super I don't max know what deal. it is. I know I just – I don't know exactly how it works. I know, mm -hmm. but I, re, I did read that if he doesn't get to 65 games this year, he will mm -hmm. lose $40 million. I don't know how yeah, – If he exactly doesn't make that work. Yeah, yeah, the way that, yeah. the way that, that but, works – go ahead, go ahead, Bob. No, oh, okay. I'm, I'm saying chill town. Should, should he get paid the full amount? If he only plays uh, two thirds of the games, if the Pacers are willing to pay him, and the only reason he doesn't make it is because he doesn't fit the requirement for an All NBA team, yes. But that's why I think All NBA teams being tied to contracts is stupid. 
the I media. That's what I'm saying. I don't think I don't think the, I don't think any owners I don't think any owners are, are happy with the fact that they have to keep paying these dudes all this money and they're not they playing all the games. No one's forcing them to give these guys supermax contracts. You got to pay somebody. You know what I'm saying? So when they're paying, they're paying, they're paying these guys to stay on Mars. That's that's crazy. I'm paying you. Yeah, that's, your that's point not, is that's if they don't pay them, money. someone else will. Right? That's the point. Someone exactly. is willing. So to we do. we're gonna we're gonna that's pay you. Point. So why aren't you playing over this? Uh, why aren't you playing sixty five? Because he is hurt. Okay, it doesn't oh, oh. matter. That, but what I'm, what I'm saying, so okay, I shouldn't see. I can't keep saying why because the, the reason why it doesn't matter. Because if, if, but if not, someone is willing to pay them that max, it's which not, you just said, if, if, so if, if you it doesn't give Tyrese that, someone else would have given it to him. A GM somewhere is willing to give Tyrese Halliburton that. Yes, money. but the, no, is, that, is that because they, they have? So I have to pay. I have to pay you this amount. I have to pay you this amount of money to play on my basketball team, Mars. Because I, I have, because I have to. someone but else, nobody, will. no, but the rules, these, these rules are what they are already as far as the, the money goes. I have to pay you this much money to play. But once I pay you this much money and then you're coming to coming to the season and you play 58 games, I'm not happy that I had to pay you that much money. So this is, this is what I'm saying. In any job, I don't think that you should be paid if you're not working. I don't care why you're not working. You should not be paid for work that you have not done. I don't care if it's because you're load managed. I don't care if you're hurt. No matter what the reason is, now I'm still okay with paying you some something because you're on my team, and I, you know, I'm, I'm, I don't want. To, I'm not saying you should be broke, but I'm saying you shouldn't get paid top dollar if you're not doing the work. That's all I'm saying. I don't care why you're not doing and, the work. What, 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 my whole point is the the all NBA should not be tied to how much money you should be allowed to make. The media should not be allowed to determine how much money these NBA players can make. And we've seen some of these guys' ballots. They clearly. Don't all take it serious. They have biases. They leave people off. They put people on who shouldn't be there. And they have a say in how much money guys like Tyrese Halliburton can make based on A, now how many games he plays, and B, just who they feel deserves that, those contracts. That's the big, to me, that's the big issue. The fact that the media can determine how much these guys can get paid. That's why we've seen Rudy Gobert cry when he didn't make, was it the All Star team or the All NBA team? Because of how much money he missed out on because of other people voting. That's stupid. If the team is willing to pay Tyrese Halliburton 300 million, Knowing he can get hurt, we I don't think the media or the rules on the games played should determine how much money he should be able to make. If the Pacers were willing to offer him that much money, knowing Tyrese Halliburton has been hurt the year prior, knowing he can get hurt again, why then should they have the option to not give him the money that's in that contract? Because he doesn't make a team that's voted by other people. That's stupid, in my humble estimation. <laughs> Also, the, the, the load management thing isn't, like, I don't want to say it's not a big deal because, I mean, we spoke about Kawhi, blah, blah, blah. But, like, these guys aren't missing 20 games because they load manage. They're not. They have injuries and they might load manage four or five games. Joel Embiid last year played 66 games. He didn't really load manage. He dealt with, I think, one or two injuries during the year. Um, towards the end of the year, I think he dealt with an injury. missed some time. Luca got hurt last year legitimately got hurt and played 66 games and then didn't play the last game of the season, as we all remember. He got hurt. Damian Lillard played 58 and the Trailblazers shut him down. That's what happened. The Blazers shut him down. Now played. teams have an option. They could shut a player down and make them miss the 65 game mark. That's stupid too. If they said, oh, mm, you have 40 million, if you make an all-NBA team, we'll shut you down at game 64. What's stopping a team from doing that if they're a bad team? Now he has to miss out on money because the team wants to shut him down? That's stupid too. So Damian Lillard got shut down, not hurt, played 58 games. Shea played 68 games. Shea was relatively healthy, didn't really load manage. I think he dealt with like one injury last year, played 68 games. Giannis dealt with a left knee injury last year, played 63 games. He would have missed the cut last year. Are we going to say Giannis didn't deserve an All-NBA team? I think he deserved it, but 63 games isn't good enough, I guess. Jason Tatum has been playing 70 games for his whole career. He played 74 games. That's a superstar who's been playing. This rule doesn't really affect him. Donovan Mitchell, 68 games. This rule is fine. These guys aren't missing as many games as people like to indicate. Kyrie's hurt with or without the rule. Kyrie's hurt this year. Kyrie was hurt last year. He's just going to be hurt. So Kyrie missing time doesn't change because of the rule. Joel Embiid's clearly missing time doesn't change because of the rule. Um, John Morant didn't play 65 games, but that's because he was dealing with suspensions and he got suspended again this year. So he was already ineligible, not because of injuries, but because of suspensions last year. And this year, a suspension made him ineligible again. So these guys were playing more than 65 games. The injuries, the injury, the load management wasn't causing these guys to miss 20 games a year. So I, I just don't get why we made it seem like it was detrimental to the league that everyone was missing games. When players were playing 68 plus games, as long as they were healthy and I feel like it's about and it's not even necessarily stuff that's happened the last two, three years. This is something stemming back 10 years of the league. I guess is looking on the sample side and the basis 
on what the issue is. I feel like the issue on why people are blaming load management is you're right. They might only load manage five or six games. And I'm thinking back to the days when I was graduating high school, whatever it was, and I would put in the games and Bron's not playing in Charlotte now. And it just says resting. It like it doesn't say there's a an issue that he's questionable because of a hamstring. It was just resting. It was a normal thing. Players would just rest. And the issue is, I feel like at least for the NBA. And if I'm over, if I'm I'm, I'm speaking cap, whatever it is, then hey, I'm speaking cap. But if if all these star players are missing five to six games, but these five or six games happen to be whenever they pull up into Charlotte, whenever they pull up into this shitty small market team, whatever it is, those are the five or six games. Well, that shit adds up for all these teams. That that shit adds up for Charlotte. That's not watching no LeBron, no Kawhi, no Russ, no KD, no anybody because they're choosing to, to load manage that. What did they, what did uh, Jason Tatum dub it last year or, or year before? Oh, it's just another lead pass game in Charlotte. Like that, that's a mindset in the NBA. It's a lead pass game in Charlotte. Who's watching? So if they're load managing all those games, which again, I will do the research to make sure it was something happening like that. I would assume so. That it, it seemed like a normal thing back then. Maybe I'm just romanticizing it or it's nostalgia kicking my ass on what I remember. But I feel like that was the real issue. Guys are choosing to load manage in groups and bundles on these small market teams, and it's costing them dollars, which at the end of the day, it's costing NBA dollars. And that's the issue with the fans. It's not just large markets. Think about the small market teams, too. They're so just more than allow, yeah, if I'm, don't I'm allow rest. Of, yet, please let yeah, me know. Don't, 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 then if, they, if there's – load management was a thing. No one's denying it was a thing. So if a player – if the better rule, in my opinion – well, I don't know how easy it's to implement, but – Rest on the road against teams in the other conference. Don't allow it. Well, Moss, you you only see a team once. Gave you a job, gang. You should have been. You only see a team I, once. I do have a problem. You can't with rest against that those teams. That now, if you if you have, if you have a road road game against a team in your division, rest. So what? Rest. Because cool. I want to see you. If you only see, if you only go to one arena, if you only go to an arena once a year, you shouldn't be allowed to rest that game. Now, legitimate injuries. Sure, I agree. Don't play if you're actually hurt. Also, don't put back-to-backs from teams where you have to go from one road game that you only see once a year, and don't make them go on that back-to-back. Don't do that. If it's not a back-to-back, they won't load manage, but you want to do this stupid scheduling where you have to play Milwaukee one night, and then you have to go play a bum team like Chicago the next night. Guess which game they're going to load manage? Chicago. Like, that's just common sense. So don't do those back-to-backs. Then maybe I mean, they they, that's, that's, a, that's a that's a scheduling thing, a logistic thing. Milwaukee and Chicago, they're so close. You know how that goes. They can't, they can't just make it all up. But I think with the 65 games, it makes it to where you don't – you don't because you can't really determine is it a serious injury or not. I can say – you know, I can say whatever. The, anybody can say anything. But with the 65 games, it makes it to where you know you have to play when you're healthy because you got to remember I could tweak my ankle anytime and miss a few games. So I just think it I think it just helps in that aspect. Like if you're hurt and you're gonna miss that many games anyway, it's whatever. This is for the guys that can play that are sitting out when they're when they're not hurt. This I mean they, they got to do something about it. And if it if this is what it takes, you know what I'm saying? Because Mars, you and you brought up um, imagine if a team benches a guy or shuts him down because they don't want to pay him. Like if a team imagine a team doing that to a guy that you know. Is a first team, second team, all NBA team, and he, and he has sixty four games. It's four games left in the season. No team's gonna get away with 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 shutting a guy down. That's actually that caliber of player. The backlash that they would get is is crazy. A team's not gonna get away with that. Well, the Blazers, Fellas, the Blazers we, we, shut Dame down last year. So if Dame was on the team, this let's say let's just imagine the rule was in place last year. So do they not shut him down now? So they just play him the rest of the year. Probably. He was at 58, so he wasn't even he wasn't like um, necessarily close. So um, do they still shot him down or do they play him? I think um, they play him Oz, because last year I think they one day like third in the league in scoring and him being an all NBA performer. I mean that's that's an implication of money. I I, th- I definitely think that they play him. And back to your point, like I, I know we got to move on, Ron. The all NBA in the media voting for the all NBA that's always been tied to money. The best players in the league who make the all-league defensive team, who make the all-NBA team, they get paid the most because they're the best players. So that's always been tied to money. I think the issue now is is how much money it is and the fact that you're seeing it. Yo, if you make the all-NBA team, you get an extra $40 million. Well, if you didn't know that it was $40 million, it's still going to be $40 million, and it's still going to be tied into who's voting, which is the media. And it's still going to be tied into who's making it because the best players in the league still make the most money. 
I don't think that that's ever been a question. But to your point about in terms of back to backs, I cannot argue that because if I got a nephew and my nephew loves Tyrese Halliburton and I live in Houston, they only come down here once a year. My nephew loves Tyrese Halliburton. They only come down here once a year. And I didn't get the tickets uh, uh, like two days ago. I did this in the summer because I know that they're coming down here in December. And Tyrese Halliburton decides that, yo, I can't go tonight because when they play in Houston tonight, they're in Los Angeles tomorrow. He's going to play against the Lakers instead of playing against Houston. I'm pissed about that. And not only am I pissed about that, I'm pissed about that because the ticket prices go up when guys like Tyrese Halliburton come to town. So when the Lakers come to play Charlotte, the ticket prices are not the same as when Detroit is in town. They're not the same as when, I don't know, not lying. Uh, Portland is in town. No, they're not the same. And I've been looking forward to this because, again, I got a nephew or I got a niece who likes this guy. So I think that's something that scheduling could could do a better job at. Yo, and Duke Bla uh, Baylock said – Grown man crying over that is crazy, though. Yo, Duke Baylox, forty million crying over forty million. People call. People call. I'm weeping. I'm weeping. I'm not weeping. Y'all go. Y'all gonna have to come get me out the psych ward. People. People stop, call. Stop, stop. They. They clowned Rudy Gobert for crying because, like, when you haven't seen that type of money before, you're not gonna be able to empathize with the fact that he's lost forty million dollars because of something he can't control. Okay, how about how about this? How, how about how about this? How about this, Mars? Let's take the forty million off the table, and let's let's how about it's something more reasonable. Damo, you got a job, and you're making fifty racks. Well, if you do this, you get an extra ten thousand dollars, and now you don't get that extra ten thousand dollars because this happened. Are you going to be happy about that? I'm crying in the car on the way home. Hell yeah, ten stacks. Like damn, yo, I need that. Ten stacks compared to forty. So what you? <laughs> It's relative right. though. It, it, it's relative though, Ron. No, no, no. I get, I get exactly what you're saying. I'm saying if you're gonna, if you're gonna be tight over ten thousand, just imagine what you're gonna do over forty. Right. Yeah. yeah. If, if, you want, if, you want, price, if you want, if you want them ten bands, Ron. This day. If you want them ten bands, Ron, you need to take your ass to work. That's really what you need to do, Big Ox. At the end of the day, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. We, what you, what you doing? What you, do, what you doing at the crib? If you gonna, if you gonna cry, because you missed one third of your days that you didn't get your ten bands, get your ass, get your ass. <laughs> To oh. work, hey, like, <laughs> you're right. I, I was the reason why I was at the crib. Get off your ass and on your hood. feet and get to work. Get on your job. If we being honest, get off your ass and on your feet. I know we about to move on. I just want to say because I've seen people in the chat talking about, oh, just lower the games. Listen, that lower the game logic. It, it sounds cool until you realize. And in theory, yes, the NBA could just come out and say, "F it, sixty game season." They can't do that because of the amount of money they're gonna lose. For shutting them stadiums down for those twenty games, like the like I used to think when I would say, "Oh, just lower the lower the schedule, fifty eight games, just games, whatever it is, just oh, do that, just fix everything." Oh, yeah. Gang, those are think about how many people that work in that stadium are now missing out on their money. Like, damn the NBA players' money who are getting paid on a game by game basis, which they can't. Yeah, in theory, you can just pay the players the same for less work. No, if they're not playing as many games, the NBA is not making as much money. The players aren't making as much money. But damn, the top dollar, they're going to bottom dollar. The people in concessions are losing their job, essentially. They're going to get layoffs. They're going to cut people versus just, oh, we're going to keep everybody on and lower the games. No, we're probably just going to cut some of the staff to the cut costs to save money because this is a business. I'm just saying it, it sounds cool on paper and playing 2K to lower the games. Logistically, that money that's talking game, they're not just going to lower – the games from 82 20 games of revenue I'm, oh I'm go look good. at how much money i mean they, they, they would they would just they would just up the ticket prices that's what they would do they would, which they is would not going to work neither that's not going to work neither you know, fellas, we, we got we got to yeah. move on fellas we, uh, we have yeah. to move on i got this draft that i want to do and i got some super chats i want to read uh i'm going to post a poll you guys let me know the teams you want to do it's going to be a two on two draft let me know if you want damo and mars damo and chill or damo and ox you, I, I just ran the poll. We'll get to this in a second. Oh, in the draft is we will be drafting between rookies and sophomores. So every every potential rookie and every potential sophomore is on the board. I want to see if it was so a not draft. just the ones in the game, just not the one. Not no, just no, no, no. In any okay. rookies and sophomores. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, 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 cool. All right. Uh, DSG Piccolo though said, "Yeah, Damo, you you good? No, I'm oh, no, I was no, no, I, I know. I, I was reading the chat out loud. <laughs> Miles, Miles is the person that worked in Notre Dame Stadium. Worked in the stadium again. It, it's not. I know these are NBA oh. stadiums. 
You can't just pick up different events because you're doing 20 less games. It's not going to balance out the cost. And the people working in the stadium, they're not going to be able to do the same thing. The ball boys, the, the whatever, the security, all the security for a basketball game, there's not going to be the exact same security for a Taylor Swift concert, guy. Like, it's going to be a different amount of different type of workers. It's not going to be the same. Ta- so, Taylor yeah. Swift leveled up beyond NBA arenas. She doing. She, she's too far. She's doing Coliseums now. Yeah, that's what she's doing. Let's look at looking. <laughs> She she leveled up. DSG Piccolo said, "Did y'all see Tony Snell say he needs to be on the team by Friday for the rest of the season to get retirement benefits? Also, also gets the health care plan needed for his family. You think he gets signed? Well, first of all, he's in the G League right now. And he needs to be on a he needs to be on a team by Friday because if he's on a team by Friday, he gets the, he gets the ten year retirement benefits, and he's got somebody to sign. Got to sign somebody. Got yeah. to sign that man." And he's got a son that's got autism, so this is this is a this is a problem. This has been a, this has been an ongoing problem for him. So he does need that to happen. I mean, and, the, and the I, NBA, I, I, yeah, the NBA meant to be a brotherhood. I would not. That wouldn't bother me if somebody signed him to a ten year deal. Ten, ten. I'm sorry, ten year. Ten. He year on year Boston's G League team, right? Yeah, he on a he on a G League team up in uh Boston. Do your job in Maine. Lock in. Up in Maine. Yeah, that that wouldn't that if wouldn't. Luke Cornett has a contract. Boston, lock in ten day. <clears throat> Twenty seven. Did that? that, that wait, but didn't didn't that say that he has to be on the roster for the whole year? Oh, did it? Yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. Detroit. Lock in, Detroit. <laughs> oh, for real. All Good right, point, so you moving these. along. Pimp name Slickback said when it could when it comes to the game rule. The TV networks and the advertisers pressured the NBA into this. Load management has been hurting NBA ratings for the last decades. If it's players, it it players doesn't. If players don't like it, give your money back. It's always the players who want to give back that money. That's funny. Napoleon Ice Cream said Embiid has missed ten road games and two home games this season. On top of on top of sixty five game requirement. For awards, let's make a minimum road game requirement, maybe thirty. So if MB, so if MB gets much. hurt before a road stretch, out of his control, like people get hurt, like I, I never mind. It's, big Ops, you just said it. This is really, this is really two plus two and simple. If you are not genuinely hurt, bring your ass to work. What's the problem? What is the problem? If you are yeah, not then genuinely you hurt, people questioning if the person could de- genuinely hurt, like they just did with Embiid when he and, didn't play that, Denver. That, that, that's a you problem. That, that is a you problem. Mm-hmm. We did it, us. We did it. <laughs> Everyone here killed Embiid when he didn't play in Denver. We then watched him play against Golden State. We're like, oh, this guy can't play. But what did, what did we do before we even had the fact? Embiid ducking Denver. What was the chat doing? Embiid scared of Jokic again. He don't want to play Denver. Then the facts come out. Oh, wow, this guy really can't play. But we don't care about the facts. We just want to say what we want to say with no information and just run wild. These players hear that. Like, they're clearly, it's, it's, they clearly it's, it's, hear what's it, happening. This is and part Embiid's of the business, like, Oh, yeah, I guess I can't play. Business, oh, you're going to see now. Let's see how I look when I play. Oh, yeah, Embiid can't move. We the I say this all the time. We're the problem. Like we really yeah. are the problem. We'll start, I hope man. you guys enjoyed it. I think that was the problem. All right, y'all. It's looking like as of right now, <laughs> the team is going to be Damo in Mars first. Chill in Ox. Mm. So let's go ahead and get into it. Uh, positions don't necessarily matter. So I mean, these are over here, but it doesn't really matter. We're gonna do uh, fifteen roster spots on each team, and we're gonna get to it. Um, what we'll do is Damo and Mars will go first. Oh, okay, nice. I think it's a pretty easy pick, Domo. I believe in you. I was about to say, did you want to go first? Rock, paper, scissors for the first pick? It, it didn't matter to me. We're, we're both going to take the same person, right? Well, hold on. Are we? If, if, <laughs> if, you guys are gonna rock, if you guys are going to rock, paper, scissors for it, I believe that you guys should rock, paper, scissors for who goes first. So, uh... See, now, right. we're, done. now Ox- we're not going to get the player we need to get. O- Oxendamo, you guys want to go ahead and do your thing? <laughs> nope. Yep. All right. Chilling. Ox has Ox. stolen the first pick. Um, Who wants to go Chill. first? Chill, you got it. You got who, it, who do, who do we have to pick from? Rookies, uh, rookies and sophomores. Rookies Everybody's and sophomores. eligible. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> oh my god! 
fizzy so I can, oh, I'm not gonna oh. lie. I'm sorry. I was not like I obviously was not paying full attention. I thought we was like a whole pool of NBA players. I'm like, I mean, I, are we picking and beating Jokic? I don't know who's first. I'm, fi- I'm fine with who. I'm fine with who we're gonna get second, but we. Oh, we so, oh my god. All right. Well. Who was the first? Go ahead, chill, chill. Wimby. All right, chilling out. Get Wimby first. Yes. Put him down here. <laughs> are, we allowed, are we allowed to um discuss with our teammates? Nah. Uh, yeah. No. What? No. Nah. What's the? Oh, then what's the point? Well, what's the point nah. of being on a team? Yeah. Nah. That's crazy. We on a team and can't discuss. I yeah, do know we got to sure. we got to quickly talking over the table. Through. We playing we playing spades right now. Bro. Well, we yeah. only got eleven minutes. That's why it can't be too long. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't take too long. It doesn't take too long. Doma, you can pick. I think there's two options. I'm fine with even one. But. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Talking okay. over the table. No, no, you got it. Go ahead, get it, man. Get it. You got it. I'm gonna take chat. I'm gonna take chat. Okay, okay, okay. So our monitors chat. All right, chilling out. Just back on you. Who you got? Oh, uh, you know who I'm going with, Ron. Oh, okay. Oh wait, is, is, he, is he taking Keegan? Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, Dumbo, oh, we got it. We got it. All right. You know, who's taking Keegan? Yes. Yeah, you know who's taking Dumbo. Right, we got both. That's cool. What? Number one pick last year. Number one pick last year. Number one. No, no, no. That's what I was gonna pick. I, I was gonna take Paolo. I'm just like, don't say that. You you make me nervous. I'm like, no, because I you, I didn't know if we were on the same page because earlier we wasn't. I'm, I was concerned. Got you, got you, got you. So yeah, Paolo, obviously. Right, cool, 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 cool. Uh, do you sell it to get your guys nasty? By the way, how's that selling? Because he was still gonna be there. <laughs> oh, don't worry about this. I got you. He would he would have been there in the second round, the third round, the fourth round. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you chill, so are you. Who you got? J Dub. Mm. Up. Huh? That's a good, thing. good, bro. We good. We good. Um, it's a lot of players out here. Hmm. Okay. Um, um, now, Mars, you can go 13th last year. You can go third last year. Uh, oh, so you want to go sophomore? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm looking at. I feel like the sophomore list is better than the rookie list, in my opinion, at least so far. There are good rookies, but so far, the sophomore list have the better players. All right, so basically, we not taking turns. We just each. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm a, I'm a, I'm a go. I'm gonna go with um, Houston legend Jamari Smith. That's what I'm. Mm, I like it. I like it. I like it. We got the top three from last year. That's what we got. All right, chill. It's back to you. It's back on no, me again. It's on you. No, it's ours. Yeah, it was on us. No, it's it's on us. We working together. Okay. Yeah. It's, I, yeah it's, I, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm not mad at uh, getting Jalen to run off the table. <sighs> Damn. Come on, okay. Yeah. Chill, you don't want him. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah. Jalen Duran it is. Even, you guys don't even rock with him. He don't even win games. Thank you. That's what I'm saying, man. Y'all don't even like Detroit. Come on, man. Y'all don't like Detroit mm-hmm. basketball. All right, all right. You want to take you want to take a rookie this year? I was thinking about rookie this year and the rookie I'm Chilling thinking. Out. Y'all got Jalen Duran? Yeah. Oh. All right. Yeah, I thought they had him. I'm thinking I'm thinking number two. I'm thinking first. Miami. Oh, you thinking number two? Really? I'm thinking Miami. I'm fine. I'm fine with even one. Yeah, I'm okay, Miami. so yeah. Let me get Hami. All right, cool, hmm. cool. That's good. They got two Wimbies? Why they get Wimby twice? <laughs> they got Wimby at guard? No, nah, I'm, I'm reading it. Well. That's, that's, that's what uh, the league going to look like in a little while, so you might as well have two of them right now. That's what the league about to look like, so. <laughs> Y'all got Wimby. Yeah. Yeah, we got Hami. All right, cool, cool. All right. All right, who you? A chill, it's on you. Um... The kid that, that's in Houston, Thompson. Oh, great pick. Okay. Yeah, Mars, go ahead and. Uh, can, I, can I take another Houston? Number two this year. Oh, you uh, going Houston? Uh, that's cool. I'll, I'll take Brandon Miller. I'll take Brandon Miller. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. All right, y'all. These right here, this right here is the top 10 so far. Where's it at? Where's it at? Top 10 so far on the screen. You got Chillin' Ox with Wimby, J Dub, Keegan Murray, Jalen Duran, and Amin Thompson. Damo and Mars have Chet, Paulo, Jabari Smith, Jaime Hawkins Jr., and Brandon Miller. I think we're winning right now. I think we're winning. So far, I might have sold Wimby, but made up for it with the depth. 
Yeah, yeah, we 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 good right now. All right, it is on you, Ox. Where you going? Hmm. 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 I love that kid in Orlando, Big Ox. Oh, AB. Yeah, I love that. Kid I do. I like. I like him. You, too. you didn't like him coming in, so that's that's a nice little turn of events. I like him too. I like Cam Whitmore. I like. I like AB. Obviously, oh. Walker. Obviously, Walker Kessler. Is your Walker Kessler? Is we, we already we got Jalen Dern and we got Wimby. Yeah. Did you know Thank what? You. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm feeling that. Yeah, I'm feeling that. Yes, sir. Who yes. you guys taking? I think I'm gonna take Cam. Yes. Whitmore. I'm gonna take Cam. Eat it, Mars. Eat it, Mars. That's what I thought you were. Mars, Eat that it, was Mars. my pick, Mars. Mars. Eat it, Mars. Oh. Go back to the that draft, board, Mars. Mars. Uh. Eat it. We'll take right. Cam with you off, oh. off your hands. Eat it. Who y'all taking? Uh, I wanted Cam. I ain't gonna lie. All right. Um. So let me see. Let me see. Let me just. You wanna get another big? I'm thinking another big. I, I'm double checking just to make sure if somebody else I would want more. But if I'm gonna go another big, see, there's two. The problem is, one from this there's two. I'm thinking one's a rookie, one's a sophomore, and yeah. it's like what would you, I'll take Derek Lively. Give me Derek Lively. Right, cool. We need more. Let's see. It's one R in Derek. Don't forget about that young man in Indiana, Chill Town. Yeah, smattering. Oh, we can get the other big. Is that how you talking about big ox? Yes. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I like Benedict. Uh -huh. Matherin is you wanna it. Get, you want to get the other big? We can get the other big, and I'm. I think you're gonna like the pick I'm gonna do after that. So yeah, go ahead and get the other big. Uh, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and take Walker Kessler. Mm hmm. Seems like that's the right. I need some signs next to him, sir. Chilling Ox is back on you. Uh, I need to get a little more shooting. Yeah, you know, and and you know who I'm liking. I'm liking the kid down in New Orleans, Hawkins. Mm. Yeah, mm, I yeah. thought he was gonna fly under the radar. Yeah, I thought he was gonna fly under the radar. Okay, that's a nice pick. I can't forget about him. Mm. That's a good okay. pick for sure. So chilling. Uh, Ox got Jordan Hawkins. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right, so I'm gonna go the, I'm gonna go the second year man in Houston. Give me Tari Eason. Mm. I can't get Cam. I'm gonna get Tari, man. Come on. Mm. Decent pick. That's a decent pick. And I know mm. who my next pick is. Who's left, Chilton? Uh, I know he's gonna be there. Who is left? And Dom will think he's slick. Because <laughs> I'm on, I'm on the Damo. I'm, oh, I'm on the Damo. Right. Ass. You, yeah, did, you I'm, didn't. I'm, I'm you on didn't, the Damo. You didn't grab. Uh, you didn't grab AB. We we still left him on the table. Yeah, why wasn't? Why, why didn't we? Why didn't? Why in, Orlando, in, Orla, in Orlando. In Orlando, I didn't get him because I got Cam, I got Cam Whitmore. Oh, you got Cam Whitmore. Okay, yeah, so and they never yeah, picked him up. An, so. Anthony Black, but I know where Damo going, and you think you're gonna get him off your hands, and you're not. What? Think you're gonna get him. And you, and what are we not. talking about? Uh, you think you're gonna get him and you're not. Nope. I know I where you're going. I'm no on your ass. Is, I'm on you. Because I'm I'm thinking about someone in Detroit, but I don't know who you think. And that's exactly who I'm thinking. Uh, and that's damn. And, Chill's thinking too. and I that's what I was thinking, but chills on to me. And I think <laughs> I am thinking about the person. Wait, wait, the first year or second year, Detroit. Well, I'm thinking second year. Oh, but I don't okay, mind I was, first year. I'm I was thinking first year. I was thinking first year. I was thinking first. second year because we need a guard, but I'm perfectly fine with first year. Oh, don't worry about it. We can we can get a guard. We'll still be able to get a guard. Uh, yeah, How many more picks we got left? How many more picks we got left? Oh, uh, we're doing 15. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, go take first year. Go take first year. That's cool. It's your pick, right? Oh, uh, sorry, Thompson. Uh, yeah. No, it was your pick. Yeah, uh, we agree. It's fine. That's all. Yeah. My my apologies. We got to do 12. We short our time and we got to get through this quick. Mm -hmm. All right, that's fine. Okay, all we right. took us off. We took us off. I saw he's hype. See a hype on defense game. Yeah, our team played defense. A lot of defense over there. Ox. Actually, uh, fellas, we're gonna have to go for uh we're gonna have to go 10 picks. So we no, got, got, got lower and uh 
All right, so we got we got to get some guards. All right, Mars, we got to get some guards. All right, I got a, I got a cool little three to four guards. In what you think of your tail? I'm thinking it's on us right now. I'm thinking a kid from Utah. That's what I'm thinking. Ooh. What's Keontae? his name? Uh, Keontae? Yeah, Keontae George. That's what I'm thinking about. Well, I'm thinking of two guards now. Okay. Don't know who you think. I, I'm thinking of a guard in OKC and a guard in Detroit. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, I was thinking more guard in Detroit. All right, cool. Mm-hmm. Jaden Ivey. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, you know what, your town? Let's grab one more big just to, just to shore up our depth. Let's go ahead and grab uh let's go let's go let's go at the big the big fella from um Charlotte from Duke Mark, Mark Williams Mark Williams Mark Williams do you want, yes, do, you want get, um, do you want to get the rookie in Washington? Just because I, I think he's good enough to be out here. You know what? I wasn't even thinking about him. We could go him. I was honestly gonna be a sleeper pick. I was gonna think second year second year man. No, 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 second year man in Dallas. But nah, Ooh, yeah, the numbers like yeah, see, because I think I was thinking guard, but I don't mind it. Yeah, we can go there. We can go there. We can go there. Yeah, let's get let's get below. Let's get below. Bilal Kulabali. Straight. Deep. We got enough guys who can pass the ball. Um, we just gonna we just gonna run run the offense and play defense. All right, y'all. This, this is, is what our teams, offense. Yeah, this is what the teams look like tomorrow. Well, uh, we don't have enough time to do all the voting and stuff like that, but we'll come back tomorrow and talk about it and see uh, why you guys think your teams are winning and all of that good stuff and get a chance to vote on it. But until then, y'all, be easy. Catch us on playback later tonight and like the video on the way out. Ada. Get the new ramen flavor. <laughs> we. <laughs> that, Damo. Hey, Damo.